Welcome everyone, Sports Journey Broadcast Network live from Dulles Green Turtle here in Sterling, Virginia. Myself, Washington Redskins starting fullback Darrell Young and his teammate, rookie cornerback Richard Crawford. What's going on, fellas? How you doing? What's going on? What's going on, man? How you doing? You know, uh, we, we have to do our job as a secondary and as a defense. And, you know, we got to eliminate those three big plays a game that keep happening. And I feel like if we do that this week, they won't even score over 20 points. I feel like we, we're up to the challenge this week, and I, I feel like we'll do that. Do you think as an offensive player to maybe slow the game down just a little bit? Uh, we have to help the defense. You know, you go back to that first half. I don't even know how many yards we had in the first half, but it was embarrassing to be a part of something like that, you know. Uh, after putting up so many points and being so explosive, you know, in the New Orleans game and somewhat, you know, in the first half of the St. Louis game. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we have to evaluate ourselves from an like offensive stand. We got to help the defense. You know, we got to keep them off the field. They played entirely too much in the first half, you know. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. People don't understand how, how good Andy Dalton is. He's a good quarterback. There was a reason why he was in the playoffs. It wasn't just because of his teammates, you know, or supporting cast around him. But, uh, like I said, we just got to help the defense. You know, it's not one person on defense that you can look at and say, you know, they, the team is going to attack them because they're a weak link. You know, you have Richard come in and step in for Cedric Griffin. Did a great job. I mean, touchdowns are going to happen in this league. The other team gets paid, and success is a part of the game. So the other team has to have success in order to have a football game. So you look at it from that standpoint, he's a rookie, he's young. And even myself, I missed a couple blocks. But, you know, you, you don't miss those blocks. Who knows what that play will turn out to be, you know. So it's, a, it's the ownership is on all of us. You know, you can't single one person out. I, I think that, uh, you know, if you – just go across the board you know young guys you're still a young guy you know it's a new group of players here and it's something that coach Shanahan has always said he wanted to bring in some young young fresh meat so to speak you know to come in and uh, I just think it's it's growing pains you know trying to figure each other out trying to get a pace to the game Uh, look at it this way in the past defensively they said this team couldn't cause turnovers rookie comes in cause forces a fumble uh, last week so that's there. There were guys said that they couldn't get sacks on defense. That's there. Uh, Rob Jackson, Chris Wilson played well filling in for Brian Arakbo. And then you have an offense to score on points. So I just keep trying to remind fans it's just three games. You know, the season's not lost. The season's not over. Yeah, we, haven't, we haven't even played the first quarter of the season yet. You, no, you look no. at Tampa Bay. They're kind of going through the same struggles that we're going through. They're a young team, new coaching staff. They, they, they got to find a way to win, and that's what – that's our problem right now. We're still right. trying to get over that hump. I mean, I know this is third year under the Shanahan regime, but like you said, I mean, you, you look at the transition that teams have to make. Eli Manning, Victor Cruz, and Hakeem Nix won that game for the Giants. <laughs> the Tampa Bay should have won. Yeah, you know? yeah, but, yeah, they you know, stole looking that game. At that film, but, I mean, it's just going back to, like you said, we just got to be hungry, and we are hungry. So we, I, I feel like we know how to finish. We just have to actually, you know, do it, you know, so – We've come a long way from the last, uh, you know, from uh, in two years, I'll tell you that. Do you feel like, though, that the team is, uh, spirits are still up? Yeah, I mean, yeah, as far yeah as definitely. As I mean, we haven't even played the first quarter of the season yet. Okay, okay. Like you said, it's game three. We're going to have some fun because at the end of the day, that's what it's about, wins and fun. So You need one, though. I mean, because if you come yeah, back yeah. from Tampa, one and three, that's uh, it's a different. It's a different. It's, a different, it's called uh, pressure at that point. <laughs> yeah, it's a different lead. Then. I mean, two and two is a lot different than being one and three, but uh, – like you said, it's it's football, man. You have to have struggles to have success somewhere along the line. Listen, I, I just keep reminding people the Giants were what nine and seven last year. And that, then they go New England. They got something nice on their hands. <laughs> New England was sixteen and zero and didn't win. That's right. So, so that, that doesn't mean anything. Well, the league is, is a lot of parity in the league right now. I, I'm not going to get you guys in trouble. I'm not going to talk too much about the referees. I mean, actually, there's word that they may have something done by this weekend. Get the uh, the, the the real referees back. Richard, this is a question that's actually for you because being a rookie, he doesn't really know what good officiating is. <laughs> I, I, I mean, have you have you thought about how the game might change for you when the real referees come back, or he's just you just you, you, you don't know yet? Uh, I've thought about it because, like, uh, honestly, they've been they like with the pass interference calls. You could tell the big difference mm-hmm. with the with the referees. You know, um, then going back to the Packer game, like watching that, like I was. In shock when I, <laughs> I mean, because I'm a DB, so like, I mean, we get taught to, to hit the ball down. Like everybody's like, he should hit the ball down, but in that situation, I felt like he felt like he couldn't hit the ball down because there was just a bunch of people around sure. there. So that's where you get taught when there's a bunch of people, it. you catch it. He caught the ball and he just put his hands on his arms. And he they, was behind him. He actually had his hand around his back. Uh, are you surprised they didn't overturn that? I'm talking I, about the league, not so much the refs, but the league when they had a chance. 
to review the tape? Well, I feel like they're in a situation where they really can't overturn it because you're, you're taking a win from somebody and giving it to somebody else. You can't do that. But I can't believe the refs in the game didn't overturn that. That was crazy. I mean, I'm like, what? Well, they have to overturn that. This, there's no way that's a simultaneous catch. I have it like this. I think they didn't overturn it because it would be an admission that the referees are not good. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, you know, you can't comment on the refs too much because who knows that the regular refs – wouldn't have made that call. You know, we don't know what will happen. We don't know. I think you know that that would have been an interception. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, but I don't know because I, we've had some bogus calls called against us too. You know, That's fair. But, uh, That's fair. But, I mean, you look at it from that standpoint, we can criticize the refs all they want. They're doing their jobs. They're doing it to the best of their ability. They don't come to the sideline and say, hey, you missed your block. You know, so I, they, can, they don't criticize me, so I don't feel the need to criticize them. I just say, and I just wish they had, I wish that it looked like they felt like they had confidence as opposed to, you know, sometimes we're on the field and they might a decision might be affected by what one of the players might say. Right. Being a veteran, you know, you might hear just not saying that this happened, but using Jared Allen. If he goes to a ref versus me going to a ref, you know, the call. It's might a different be, story. Yeah. So. So they haven't think, really called it as far as like the, the superstars. You yeah. know, they haven't. You know, they haven't given them the NBA treatment is what I no, call no, it. No, you no, know, no, you can no, travel. They, they do that. You can do all you want. <laughs> no, you know. And LeBron treatment. <laughs> hey, I think I think he's earned that now. So yeah, I mean, even like when you go back to Sunday with uh, D. Hall and AJ Green, he didn't even hit him in the face mask. Like I was like, some of those. I mean, yeah, I can't say bad calls. I can't criticize the ref like he said. Like I could just say like what I think what what should have happened, you mm -hmm. know. But I feel like when you're a veteran player, you kind of expect to get like certain amount of calls mm -hmm. like in your favor just because mm -hmm. you're a veteran, you know. So I felt like they kind of shortened him on the stick on that. Uh, you've progressed now as far as uh, a lot of fans, and there's been a lot of people since preseason were like, it's okay, Richard Crawford, he looks pretty good. He should make the team. He should do some things. Uh, you're kind of emerging now. I mean, you're pretty much the third corner. I mean, is it? do you feel like you have embraced that role? And, uh, you know, how have guys like Josh Wilson and uh, D'Angelo Hall helped your game? Uh, they're hard on me now because, <laughs> especially after Sunday, like, because that, that mistake I made, and it was so costly, but – uh, I think I think it's a learning experience. Well, both of them got beat too. I mean, but <laughs> I'm just calling it like it is. <laughs> yeah, but they don't. They want something different from me. They want me to be be a successful player, you know. So they're they're real hard on me about sure. that type of stuff. And so is Coach Hazlitt. So mm -hmm. um, I just make sure I put that in my memory rank and not make that mistake again. But as embracing the corner role, um, I'm just trying to help the team win. So whatever that is. Special teams, you know, I'm trying to improve on that, too, because, you know, I really didn't do a lot of special teams in preseason, so I'm trying to improve on that, stay after practice with Danny, do extra work with that. Just, I'm just trying to help the team It's a special teams monster, too, right here. Yeah. So, you know, this guy can help get you where you need to go as well. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, 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 I do want to tell you, special teams unit played really well this past weekend. Even on, you know, return ball, uh, Brandon looked nice. Uh, I know you guys were taking that to heart last week. Yeah, we uh – we take pride in our special teams unit, even though our record hasn't, you know, been where we wanted to be over the past couple of years. I mean, our special teams unit has been top five in the league in every category. Uh, so anytime, you know, you're in a situation where you have, you know, uh, punts blocked back-to-back -back weeks, I mean, it's not the coaches. It's not Danny Smith because he's one of the best in the league. It's the players. And uh, he always says it doesn't take a fancy scheme to block something. It was just a lack of technique, you know. So we'll get better with those things. I mean, we are fortunate enough to win the New Orleans game. It uh, had a part to do with the St. Louis loss. You know, I'm not going to say it was that single, that only no, play no, in the game. No, 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 there was a couple uh, things going on. Definitely. But, uh, I mean, this past week I think we corrected that and then we kind of lost focus of what we needed to do from, a, you know, offensive defensive standpoint, you know. So once we put all those together, we'll be all right. And I feel like uh, this is the week to, to start doing something to show, you know, Rescue Nation that we're not out here just paying for pay, uh, playing for paychecks and, you know, just for the fame. You know, this is something that we all – you know, dream. You want to win. You know? Well, you know you get more money when you win, too. You know, you know what? That is true. But like you said, <laughs> the atmosphere is so much different. I mean, you look at the before the season, all the hype was about RG3 and his team and how, you know, successful we were going to be. But all of a sudden now we lose two games in a row and, you know, this team isn't, you know, what we thought. You know, is RG3 the answer? Does he need a better supporting cast? And I think Shanahan did a great job of building this team up of guys who want to be here and are hungry and, you know, at the end of the day, just want to win. And everyone, I think, is coming from a winning program, you know, at some point in their life, whether it be in college, whether it be in high, high school. school and, yeah, good point. You know, and you, you just, it's just different when you lose because you don't – everything is just so tense in the building. The coaches are different. And the only person that's safe in the organization is the owner. So 
Yeah, you're looking from that standpoint, it's the coaches' butts, it's our butts, you know, it's everybody. So it's not just, you know, us having all the pressure or, you know, Shanahan having all the pressure or, you know, you hear all these rumors about Raheem getting ready to call all the players because of having oh, It's just, man. just oh, crazy. Sounds, that one was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Well, well, welcome, welcome to the NFL. Welcome to D.C. This is what happens. It's always a circus, Richard, where just – I don't know where that came from. I don't know how that got. I know it wasn't us in the media. We were getting it, but <laughs> I never even heard Coach Hazlitt and Raheem like argue before. Like, like I've only heard them yell at me. Like I've never heard them yell at each other. Like I've never, and I'm around them like all the time. Like, well, I'm glad you can shoot that down because there were people coming in here last week asking me, you know, is that true? Did you hear that Raheem was calling the players? I said. No, that that's not happening. Uh, not at all. You can't undermine any coach at that level, uh, especially one of the coordinators, in the second game of the season. No, no, that's not going to happen. That so. happens. But <laughs> to answer to to have a response to that court, or to that statement, everyone's every time someone says in the media or analysts or anyone says Tom Coughlin is going to be fired, he wins the Super Bowl. <laughs> every time. Every time. Every time. Every time. So I think Even like, going back to high school. I remember yeah. when I was in high school. He's going to get time. fired. Oh, every they time. win the Super Bowl. They beat yeah, the Patriots. Yeah. You, so. you don't fire a two-time winning so, Super Bowl coach, man. That's not going to happen. Look at it from that standpoint. It's all about what people think, what they say, what they hear. You know, it, it, at the end of the day, we're, we're paid to line up and do what, you know something that we've always been told to do. You have to block that stuff out, though. I mean, you have it rough or you know, the other the 10 guys on the field that you're competing against, I mean, competing with, and the 11 you're competing against. And then the fact that you have, what, 90,000 people, your first time being in, a, in FedEx as far as the game, was it everything you thought it was going to be? Uh, yeah, it was a little bit louder, you know. Um, Were you a little intimidated by the crowd or just the size of it? or Not so much intimidated, but. I wasn't really intimidated because I've been playing a couple games, but. Um, this game was a little bit different for me since I was knowing, like, it was like, oh, I'm not coming off the bench anymore. Like, oh, I am the third corner. Sure. So it was a little bit different for me. And then it was just a learning experience for me because I'm a very, like, analytical person when I'm on the field. So when I see a formation, I delete stuff out of my head. Like, okay, this, that, and the other. <laughs> then on the, t- on the touchdown, that's why I was deleting stuff out of my head. And then when, when he ran the route, I was like, yeah, that's the only one he could have ran on that. And I was like, and I got caught flat for it. And I was like. Yeah, but I won't. tell you what though, being a vet in this league, that ain't the only time you're gonna give up a touchdown. I'm not saying that oh, you're yeah, a bad man. person. Well, you playing against pros yeah, too they now? Paid, yeah, man. they get paid <laughs> too. You see a lot better receivers than Hawkins out there. Yeah. But I got faith in you. But but this is the thing though. One thing that, that caught me off guard was just how big in person Andy Dalton was. I didn't He's think. Tall, I, I thought he. I thought he was gonna be smaller. I mean, oh, you no. went up against him before. Yeah, as in here, I was like, oh, uh, when. Well, um, people were like, I didn't know Andy was that good. I, but I was like, yeah, he can, he can play. I mean, because I mean, when, you, when, you yeah, <laughs> when you come from a smaller school, you know, people kind of don't give you that, like, that, like, oh, you don't play in the SEC, you don't play in this conference, you don't play in that conference, you know. But I knew Andy could play. I mean, coming from TCU or Boise State, you know, you, when they play the big teams, they win. They do. You they know? do. So, and, and that's a prolific offense. Uh, was it Gary Barnett, uh, coach of TCU? So, oh, Coach he, Patterson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah uh, Patterson, exactly. So, yeah. They're scoring points there, so obviously I thought he could play well. I mean, you got another uh, Big 12 guy and your quarterback now. I mean, I think sometimes people get caught up in this SEC thing too much. You know, I'm a Big 10 guy, but, you know, I'm, lead, I'm not saying it because everybody tells me I talk about my school too much, so I'm leading them out. Uh, one of the other really impressed me was the next level, it seems like, uh, A.J. Green's getting to now. I mean, you know he's a great receiver. But it does start to seem like he's starting to enter into that elite category. How impressed with you, uh, you know, it's, it's in the game. I know you can't look at a guy and say he's good because you're covering him. But but how impressed were you, though, getting a chance to see him out there? Um, You know, I, I was really impressed. You know, I, I, noticed, I noticed it when I watched film. And what, what his elite trait is when you say, talk about elite players is he has elite ability to track the ball um, that a lot of people don't have. And, um like, people give me credit for being the DB that I play the ball really well. So, uh, when somebody does that, I notice it really well. And AJ does – he – I think he's the best in the league. Me and Coach Raheem kind of agreed on it. That he's the best in the league at tracking the football. Wow. He, wow. Has, he has Randy Moss' ability when it comes to tracking the football. Like, I don't think he's athletic as Randy Moss is in terms of speed. But in terms of going up and getting the ball, plucking it out of the air, I feel like he is the number one player. Him and Calvin Johnson are doing that, you know, so. Man, you got a, you got a gym right here. Because, I mean, this guy right here, let me tell you, he's a historian. He knows we can talk about a lot of stuff and he can go. 
But I'm impressed with your, with your, your, your knowledge because I've seen some rookies come up and I'm like, man, they don't get it. <laughs> so are you, you got to study the, study the game? Oh, yeah, you have to. I mean, even when going um, to the Bengals, you know, um, when we came in at halftime because, you know, uh, the first half I had guarded AJ the majority of the time because they started lining him up on me like, oh, rookie, we're going to kind of go after him. But, you know, I was surprised they really didn't go after me at all when he was on me. But we went into halftime, and he was like, okay, we're adjusting. D. Hall, you have this guy. Rich, you have this guy. You have this guy. So I had to study all those guys anyway. So I knew all those guys' weaknesses and what their strength was. I knew Hawkins was the best at getting off the line. I knew A.J. was going to use his size to get off the line. Same with the other guys. So, you know, um, I just love studying football. I mean, I could tell you about – guys that are on TV right now that on other teams that I watch to tell you what their strengths and weaknesses are along with mine. So, you know, um, I love watching football. That's what I do. What's this guy's strength? What's Darrell's strength? He's an athletic fullback, actually. Very he decent, can, man. <laughs> he, can, he can play. He can play tailback, you know. So um, he was actually doing a little bit of it in yeah, last yeah, weekend and this week. Say, don't, don't let you that know. cat out that bag just yet. You what, know, what, so. What's his weakness? <laughs> his weakness? We'll put him on spot now. Um, I don't really know, dude. Why? What's your weakness? I mean, hey, uh, he, you, me. should, you, should know, <laughs> you should know. You know, I know. I, so know I don't my, have one. Uh, <laughs> uh, not know that I know of. <laughs> uh, probably pass pro is probably my weakest thing. Not that I'm weak at it, but. I mean, if you had that's it, not like, something that's that's just a given for anybody. Yeah, that, that's hard defense, for running too. back. I mean, yeah. coming from defense, it's a little different, man. <laughs> you get I your brains beat in at that yeah. fullback spot, man. Yeah. I give fullbacks lots of credit because uh, they take the most pounding out there. I have some fun, man. I think <laughs> that's the difference. Was, was Cincinnati funny, talking man. trash to y'all, though? A little, uh, a little. They defense. I mean, they were. But not like the Rams, honest, though. To, I was going to say that. To be honest with you, they were very classy in terms of the Rams. Okay. All you know, right. Well, but the Rams, the Rams was, they, they were junky. Oh, man. Right. They came out there from the jump. I said, Rocky, you didn't talk this much in seven years with the Redskins. <laughs> and now you all of a sudden, <laughs> every other play, you saying something, man. Yeah, but, I, uh, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe he used to play for us. So the way how he was talking to people out there, I was like, hey, don't y'all know him? It was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like. Man, that's crazy. Like, yeah, they, they put a little something in the juice down there for that game. It was a different ball game. Though. I heard uh, Rocky gave the speech, the pregame speech the night before the game. So I don't know what he said to them to motivate them. But uh, Wait, I with Rocky McIntosh? That's what I said, Rocky McIntosh. Mute. This guy mute. was here was mute. He was, mute. he was seriously real quiet, soft-spoken. Didn't talk on the field either. Church every Sunday. <laughs> he wouldn't even think that. <laughs> so he was down there just, just getting Selling busy that. with it. I mean, the Rams, like. I know that's like two weeks ago, but man, like that was the dirtiest game I've ever been a Everybody part of. Everybody keeps saying, I mean, there's not one player that has not said that. I mean, I, we played rivalry games at TCU, and like last year we got, in like, we got in like four fights in the game. But like I've never been in a game where they stop every play because somebody is scuffling. <laughs> like I felt like that's why our game took so long because after every play it was like a little scuffle. It'd be like two, three. Sometimes it'd be like all 11 get, getting involved. I was like, this is ridiculous, and See, man. that's surprising considering that both coaches are good friends with each other, too. I mean. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's real surprising right there. Well, look, folks, we, we're going to take a break because I know Richard, uh, you know, uh, appreciate you coming out. I know he's got to uh, kind of get out of here from what Darrell was telling me. So we'll take a break. When we come back, uh, we'll bring in one of your former teammates, uh, Rob Henson's here. Uh, we'll bring him on with us. We're live from Green Turtle, uh, Dulles. Green Turtle here at the uh, Dulles Town Center. We're here every Wednesday from 7 to 9. So if you get a chance, come on out, check us out. Darrell, uh, Chris Wilson, uh, bring some of your teammates out. Uh, we have a good time, good food here as always. And remember, uh, before we go to break, just a quick reminder, Monday we're at uh, Green Turtle in uh, Boston, Virginia. Tuesday, Green Turtle up in Olney, Maryland. We were there last night with uh, Chris Wilson. Had a great time. Uh, so, once again, you can always go to sportsjourney.com and check us out live in HD. Take a break. We'll be back. Sports Journey. Sports Journey Network. This is not a workout. This is a revolution. This is Shake Weight for Men. And it's going to kick your butt. Whew, that's it. In just six minutes. Guaranteed. Uh. Ordinary weights isolate one muscle in one direction. But Shake Weight harnesses the power of dynamic inertia to totally redefine strength training. As you shake, the weights at each end fire and recoil rapidly. 
This piston-like motion sends a shockwave of energy that forces your muscles to contract as many as 240 times a minute. So you build definition, size, and strength fast. And now this technological breakthrough in strength training can be yours for just $29.95. Shake weight is science fact, not fiction. A leading biomechanics research center proved that six minutes with the shake weight burns as much muscle energy as 42 with a standard dumbbell. You get ripped, defined, and stronger, fast, guaranteed. Call and order now and we'll also send you this six minute upper body workout DVD. It's everything you need to add size, definition, and strengthen your chest, triceps, biceps, and shoulders. Technology is all about packing mega performance in less space, right? Shake weight proves it. That's why it comes with this ironclad kick butt guarantee. Do the shake weight workout just once. If your arms, chest, and shoulders aren't on fire in just six minutes, return it for a 100% refund. We'll even pay return shipping. Whew, that's it. Three exercises, six minutes, and the faster you shake, the more intense and challenging your workout. Think you can handle it? Then call now and build muscle and definition in just six minutes a day with Shake Weight for Men. If you want to shed fat and get a body that's shredded, then it's time to get on the rack. The Rack is a complete total body workout system, and it's the hardcore hardware that adds a whole new dimension of variety and intensity to traditional body weight exercises. You get explosive chest, shoulders, and back, big arm blast, and ripped abs on the rack, a fat shredder workout, and a total body muscle building express workout, totally ripped on the rack. Order now and get this special Get Ripped on the Rack 30-day trial for just $14.99. When you order, also ask how you can get the rack system shipped right to your door for free as an added bonus you'll get the rack nutritional guide custom workout guide and special bartenders workout dvd plus shipping that's a total value of 60 dollars all for free but only if you order right now call now and order the rack total body workout system for this special 30-day trial of just 14.99 Dear Bowflex, I dropped eight dress sizes, 36 pounds, and all I had to do was walk. This is the Bowflex Tread Climber Machine, the easiest way to walk and burn up to twice the calories in less time. By combining the motion of a treadmill, a stepper, and an elliptical, you get the calorie burning benefits of all three workouts at once. I lost 30 pounds in four months. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Call now for your free DVD and information kit. You'll see how the Tread Climber burns up to twice the calories of a treadmill. Plus, you'll learn how you can own a Tread Climber machine today with special financing for 18 months. Within the first couple of weeks, I started to lose inches. I lost 50 pounds in three months using the Tread Climber. Call or go online to buytc.com for your free info kit. We'll also send you the Bowflex Insider's Guide with a personal fitness assessment to help you jumpstart your Bowflex body today absolutely free. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bowflex. Sincerely, J.D. Weber. Tired of lugging out your heavy, bulky pressure cleaner? You need the amazing Water Jet. It turns your ordinary garden hose into a super power washer, powerful enough to clean second story windows. Here's how it works. Water flows through the volume reduction chambers where pressure builds until a powerful jet stream blasts through the precision engineered solid brass tip. The control valve regulates the water pressure. Great for siding, umbrellas and awnings. Blast grime and weeds off brick and paper driveways. It attaches to any garden hose so you can take it along boating and camping. Quality built with stainless steel aluminum and solid brass and only $19.95. You'll also get the bonus fan tip that creates a powerful fan-shaped spray. Scour away mold, scrub wood decks and docks, patios and pool decks, cars and trucks. Dial back the pressure to gently water flowers. There's more. We'll double the offer. You'll get two amazing water jets and two fan tips for only $19.95. Just pay additional processing and handling. Call to get the jet. To order Water Jet, call 1-800-973-9853. Call now and we'll double the offer. Call 1-800-973-9853. Welcome back, everybody. Live from Green Circle, <laughs> Dulles, <laughs> here in Sterling, Virginia. Myself, Washington Redskins fullback, Darrell Young. And we're bringing in a former teammate of Darrell, Mr. Rob Henson. Mr. Henson51 on Twitter, that is. What's up, Rob? What's going on, man? Not much, man. What's going on? Welcome back. Appreciate it, brother. Listen, we've got a lot of stuff that uh, 
we do on this show. We get silly sometimes, you know, the first uh, first half an hour, first 40 minutes, talk Redskins. But then we do some silly things. So, uh, you know, we're going to loosen up here a little bit, folks. If you want to ask some questions with some with Darrell, with Rob, myself, uh, you can get into our chat box online. Uh, there are people in there. So fire away. We'll ask your questions. If you're here in the building and you want to ask us a question, come on over. Uh, just be careful of the equipment. We won't start a fire. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that uh, this one of your former former teammates here, and this guy was a guy that we used to look at as one of the harder hitters on the team. That's for sure. <laughs> we just asked Richard as far as Darrell, strengths and weaknesses. So I'm going to ask both of you guys, put you on the spot. What's Darrell's strength and his weakness? And I'm going to ask you, what's Rob's strength and what's his weakness? So whoever want to take that first and go ahead. <laughs> I go first. Well, Henson, like you said, is a hitter, hard worker. Uh, we had a lot of good days on the scout team before I got released, man. I, I tell you that. You know, There's a couple <laughs> times I'm like, man, it's crazy. They moved me to fullback. But I tried to, uh, I wish I could cut him a couple times. He hit me. I'm like, man. But then, thinking he would switch it up and lay you too, because I'd be running full speed. I'm about to try to kill him then. <laughs> like, I can't win with this dude, man. But anytime you got a player like that, you know, you just, uh, and we just, you just don't want to be involved with that. But in terms of weaknesses, I mean, I, ain't, I haven't seen any from, you know, from a linebacker standpoint from him. I mean, he was one of the, the best. If he didn't get hurt, who knows what would happen. You yeah, know? So, I, think, I think that's the sentiments of a lot of, you know, a lot of Redskins fans. A lot of Redskins fans were upset that he wasn't with the team, injury or not. I, I, I said the same thing, man. If they, I think if they would imp, uh, implemented this rule that they have now for the IR, IR absolutely. I think he would have been, been perfect, perfect situation. Said, to be honest with you, I, was, I look back too. Teams don't keep two fullbacks. No. They might keep five inside linebackers. No. I might not be active if he's, you know, if he's healthy. So. Well, and I don't say yeah, thank you for yeah. that situation because he's <laughs> one of my good friends, and I didn't want to see him like that. But I thought, to be honest with you, there's a lot of linebackers I play against now, and I'd be like, man, handsome man, you yeah, can get back yeah, in the league. Definitely. <laughs> definitely. How, how you doing, Rob? I mean, as, as far as the injury, how's that come along? Everything good now? Or? Uh, man, it's a little bit slow, man. Still uh, giving me problems. Uh, just still rehabbing, man, working my tail off. So, uh, I don't know, I'm kind of in the middle, kind of in limbo about my career, NFL career. And uh, God's been good, man, and I got other things going on that could possibly lead to, you know, bigger things as well. So, okay. just kind of in limbo with it, just praying about it every day. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. And, you know, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the life I live, I always say, you know, one door closes, God opens many more. So, you know, you got to have that positive outlook on things. Uh, you know, from from looking at this team now, you know, what do you see with this Redskins group now? I mean, do you see the, you know, athletic, you know, linebacking core? I mean, do you see guys that are getting after it? I mean, and, and, and if you need to be critical, you can be critical as well. I mean, what, what are you seeing with this team right now? Man, I see a bunch of guys who are hungry to compete, to uh, change the way of, uh, of the team. Um, and by that, I mean they, they tired of losing too. Uh, yeah. And especially those tough, close games, mm -hmm. those are the toughest ones to swallow. Uh, no, like I said, obviously played, man. That was one of the toughest games to swallow, man. You go back in the locker room, it's not really too much a coach can say to you or another player can say to you uh, to get, make you keep your head up. But uh, I see a group that continues to fight, man, that looks uh, primed and it's always in every game that they play in. And you know that hadn't always been the case. L let me ask you guys, is it, is it, is it easier – to and I know this might sound nuts here, but is it easier to to just get blown out or to lose a close game? Blown out, right? Blown out. <laughs> I, I figured that was it. At least you know what you did wrong. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the problem. Redskins never well one game, that Philadelphia game. That was just that was bad. That man. was Mike Vick's contract game. Mm -hmm. That's what that was. He should give all y'all some money for that. By the way, <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Man. But but outside I'm of that, <laughs> I'm down too. <laughs> Oh yeah, the Patriots game from a long time when they were sixteen and zero. Mm -hmm. But 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 seriously, this team doesn't get blown out. They're in most games, and in the fourth quarter, that's when something happens. Will falls off here, and then kind of things get out of control. But I'm seeing a lot of resiliency in this group. Mm -hmm. I mean, this team showed that you know they can go to New Orleans and get a big lead, but they also showed that they can come back from a big deficit. It's just a matter of getting four quarters, you know, put together here. Uh, and Darrell, I know there's something that we talk about all the time is just the the unity on the team is a little better this year than it's been in years past. So you guys are going to need that to, you know, push through this right now. Yeah, I mean, like you said, the unity is different, man. You, uh, 
I don't feel as if, you know, uh, you know, when I first came in, I wouldn't hang out with some of the guys just because uh, they weren't seeking out, you know, seeking to hang out it's with okay. each other. It's, it's know, okay but, to uh, say it, man. They just no, you know, but they like weren't I said, thinking I, football. Yeah, but it seemed like, you know, <laughs> the guys you came in with were the guys you were closest to, and, you know, that was it. You know, so, I, like I said, I came in with Cody Glenn. I came in with Robert Henson. I talked to those guys still, regardless of what the situation may be. Henson was one of the – him and uh, – he was the only guy actually that called me when I got released. So that's why we have that kind of bond. And I stayed with him, you know, while I was here. And I always say thank you for that, you know. But, uh, you know, it's, just, it's, just, it's, it's a little different, man. Like I said, our relationship will always be different outside of the football world, you know. There's a respect factor there, but it's also a friendship there, you know. And any time you have that, I mean, your team will be a lot better. Like you said, we talk about Pittsburgh all the time and how they're a family. If you don't have that family bond, then you're not going to win those close games. You might win a couple, but it's going to catch up to you sooner or later. And I say that having, uh, having covered the Ravens, I still have never seen anything like that as far as the camaraderie that they have. It's, yeah, it's, you uh, won't, man. You it's won't. phenomenal. You won't. I mean, anytime you do a charity event or, you know, we might be out in D.C. doing something, you know, whether it be, you know, out to eat or something, those guys travel in packs where you, you might see one or two of us, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, the I mean, like, that's the difference like in ten eights. of them. Yeah, that's the difference in <laughs> – going to a championship game and going home, you know, in the, uh, the first week of January. So that's still uh, something that's going to be a work in progress. I mean, we're better. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you because, like I said, Richard Crawford, I'm close with him now. He just came in and you would be like, how you cool with a rook? Yeah. You know, but at yeah. the same time, I don't, I don't look at it like that. You know, he's a good dude, you know. And he's I a teammate. To, yeah, you I try know to what surround I'm saying? myself with you know, people like that. And most of my friends are going to be in the sports world just because of what I do, you know. So we all went through that in college, too. Mm -hmm. I remember going to Penn State playing ball and it was. Oh, man. You know, <laughs> man, this joker does doesn't want to talk to you here. You know, you might get 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 some of his time from him. I'm like, I thought the object was to win games. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we can worry about all that stuff yeah. later. But unfortunately, sometimes that carries over into the next level. Um, in our chat box, uh, we have fans cross country in there, and there are a lot of people in there. Uh, one person said the Ravens are like a cult. Uh, that was big dunk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, we had a person in there as well. I think it was Brendan, and Brendan, Brendan should be here. He's over here. He says uh, you were a great prospect uh, during preseason. Uh, uh, there are a lot of people in there that, that are wishing well, you know. So, yeah, I again. Still, I still do, man. I, like I said, I, I still wish him the best because I just want his knee to get right because, so, like I said, there's so many. He's a good player, man. And <laughs> I, tell, I learned a lot from him, he, regardless of if he knows it or not. I learned a lot just from the fact of going out and how to practice hard. And him being a rookie, you'd be like, man, this guy set the tempo every day. Scout team, there was no question of what type of, type of effort you're going to get. And I say this, if you are able to stand uh, on kickoff return in the front wall and let a guy run 40 speed, uh, full speed for 40 yards and run into you, it's something crazy about you. And that's <laughs> what he did. You know, I, watch, I would watch him when they play San Diego. I, I won't forget, he's the only one excited out there jumping in the front line. I'm not saying that because he's here. But I'm just looking at a, a young guy that's hungry and trying to, you know, fit into a scheme that, you know, coaches want. And then when Shanahan took over, I felt like, you know, he, I don't know if he got the opportunity that he deserved. That's why I switched from linebacker. Right, you right. Know? But uh, in that preseason, that Cardinals game, I won't – he led the team. He led the team in tackles the whole preseason, special team tackles, big hits, you know, fumbles, all, and, you know, all that stuff. Every category that you can think of in terms of even hustle. I mean, we all came in as young rookies, didn't know the game. But I tell you what, when he – Played 2010 in his last preseason game. He he understood this game, and like I said, it's just unfortunate that an injury had to sideline him for a while. And I hope he comes back from it. Uh, that was the most difficult part for me was because uh, I changed my whole routine going up into the 2010 season. In 2009, I was scared, nervous, still uh, didn't really know what to expect from the NFL. Really didn't know if I had it in myself. But um, going into 2010, I followed Fletch around a little bit more, picked Rocky McIntosh's brain more, and me and Darrell, like you said, just stayed hungry, man, in the weight room, in the film room. Just out trying to get it, man. And uh, that was the most disappointing thing, going down with the injury and uh, not really knowing the f how, how it would affect me later on. Sure. And uh, like I said, I felt like I was kind of stepping into my own and not knowing if, if you know, potentially that would have been my come breaking out season, breakout season, whatever the case may be. I look at guys like – and me and Perry used to have these conversations all the time. Hey, we're going to be the next star linebackers of the Washington Redskins, you, whatever the case may do. And you see be. Perry now, so it's uh – a. Yeah, but Perry's, man, Perry's killing the game, man. A heck of a player, hard working, excited about every aspect of the game, man. So it's great seeing him out there. Riley, man. You, yeah. you know, you know the, the, the thing that I'm impressed with, obviously, Rob, is that I, I remember, you know, uh, when the injury came, and I remember just on Twitter, you know, there were a lot of people, and it was yourself, and it was uh, – Cornerback uh, uh, Kevin Barnes. No, not Kevin. This was uh, two, two last year, uh, two years ago. Um, 
Got drafted? Yeah, he used to call him prime, not prime time, but showtime. Uh, cornerback. He used to call oh, himself oh, showtime. Reggie Jones. Reggie, Reggie Jones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys, <laughs> yeah. Were, you guys were fan favorites, man. There were a lot of people Reggie that were Jones. like Reggie Jones. They didn't give him a, you know, give him an opportunity. They didn't give Rob an opportunity. <laughs> but the thing I'm impressed with is the fact that you still can, you still come out and you're very supportive of a team that you're not with. That that speaks volumes about you as a person. So. You know, that, that's warranted by the fans who are still in your corner mm -hmm. and wishing you well and wishing you a speedy recovery to get back out there and do what you do best. Man, that, and that's what made me fall in love with the whole DMV area, the Washington Redskins fans, man, because let's be honest, my rookie year I made that big mistake. And everybody <laughs> I'm came, not bringing it up. Yeah, everybody came to, my, came to my side and was like, you know, everybody makes mistakes. We forgive you. They saw how active I was in the community. Mm -hmm. And they just they, – they're very accepting, man. And to me, this is all, this will always be my second home, okay. whether I play for another team or whatever the case may be. Where are you originally so, from, Rob? I'm originally from Texas. Okay. Yeah. All right. Man, we got oh, a lot, Texas a lot boy, of Texas man. boys Head over here now, man. Kelly, man. Yeah, bringing, them yeah, old, yeah. bringing them old cowboy players. From Charlie, you know, because I, because I know you were probably a cowboy yeah, fan. Yeah, I was a cowboy fan they growing all up, are, man. But, man. <laughs> hey, but you know, it wasn't hard to you know switch sides when when the Redskins called my name. So yeah, that's called money. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's called green right there. Who, who was your team growing up? Yeah, you can say it. Unfortunately, I was a Giants fan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's from That's there. Of the area, yeah, but I did like the 49ers there. too, though. I did like the 49ers. How I you going to like a team across the country? Because my dad did, and it's kind of, okay, you know, yeah, yeah. back well, in that, that, that old school generation. Well, I can know? say this, man. <laughs> my father's still a diehard Cowboys fan, but he did say, because, you know, he loves his son. He did say, I gave, <laughs> I gave him a Redskins lanyard, you know, for his keys. And years ago, he would have probably told me, man, I'm, would you give me that for? I'm going to throw that thing in the trash. But recently, he was like, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to wear it. So I was like, oh, okay, you're getting old now. You're softening up, showing me some love now. So he was like, yeah, I'm proud of what you're doing. But my wife was a uh, diehard Cowboys fan when we met, and no longer. Yeah, you know, okay. th things have to change on that. So she's, she's, a, she's a Skins fan now. So, you know, you know. Listen, fans take these losses to heart. On Sunday, we leave in the stadium, and it was fans just, I mean, saying everything from fire to coach. <laughs> they shouldn't have drafted RG3 mm -hmm. to Alfred Morris isn't fast to, I mean, you. I heard every possible scenario. You go to Tampa and win on Sunday, all that will be forgotten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just the way this business is, man. That's cutthroat, though. I'm not really – I don't like fair weather. I'm not surprised, man. I, it's, it is what it is. That's our good friends at Redskins Disciples. They say that all the time. No oh, yeah. fair weather. Yeah, my know. boy Jim. Jim yeah. Beam. He yeah. says that he's part of this. And, you know, we're going to get him back up there as well. Hey, he uh, does some freestyle stuff, you know. He, he texted me the other day because uh, I was at the Skins game the other day. Okay. And I was wearing the Disciples. Mm -hmm. fit it. Okay, okay. Got a little camera time. He was so excited, man. He was texting and calling me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> That's my dude, man. Yeah, now, good we got to get you. Do you have anything? yet okay yeah we, we got to get you stuff it's, it's nice man really got nice uh black little mm -hmm. pullover i know you like your your, your pullover hoodie yeah, so stay with the hoodie yeah we, we can get you one <laughs> of those new york in you. we gotta get you one of those from jimmy <laughs> bean down there in the chat Pretty box intense. right there so you know as far as uh you, you can say you can talk about it safely i don't want to get him in trouble but your take on this whole referee situation right oh now. my god <laughs> i don't even know where to start man. i don't even know how much time we got I just know it's, it's frustrating, again, again, being a former athlete, man. I know it's frustrating when you put the game in, in those guys' hands who aren't used to call it, making those plays and making those calls. Sure. Not sure about what they call. The uncertainty is, is a killer. Oh, yeah. um, and then playing defense is harder than it used to be, obviously. I mean, there's certain things you can't do to offensive players. Mm. Um, and there's certain things that guys are getting away with now because of the new referees or whatever. And like you said earlier, going back to the Rams game, man, watching that game was hard for me because it was a street fight. Yeah, basically. I mean, basically. But as a defensive player, you would have loved that, though, right? I mean, you can you you do like it, you do like <laughs> it, you do like it. And I mean, the book was out on Cortland Finnegan too. Everybody know he's the Dennis Rodman of the NFL. So, I mean, <laughs> it worked. Though. It, it worked. I mean, I, I never thought the biggest play of the game would come after the play. Mm -hmm. um, but the refs are a lot looser with the flags, a lot stingier with the flags. I mean, it's just. There's no consistency. Yeah, like they don't have the control record. of the game. Exactly. You can see it. Even the pace. It's like well, there I mean, hasn't been a working pace to any of the games. Players are getting their way. I mean, you're lobbying for flags now. I mean, you see a guy <laughs> throw his hands up. It's like the NBA. Yeah. I mean, you see a guy throw his hands up a receiver or something, and at five seconds after that, here comes a flag. Where was the flag in the beginning? You know what I mean? At, right after the play. Well, hopefully it'll get so. rectified because, you know, as before we were even, even starting, where it was is that they're, they're, they're getting close to getting something done. So it may happen as a uh, – as early as tomorrow night, I'm thinking realistically by Saturday, give them a whole week 
to get prepared. So you're still going to have one more week of this nonsense. And, and you guys are going up against a team that uh, they're starting to make a name for themselves as far as uh, not accepting people's victory formations. <laughs> 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 hey, I ain't mad at it for it. Hey, they say play, uh, snap the whistle. We'll I mean, you ahead. can't get mad at that. I mean, I'm if you if you're yeah. down seven, if you're down six, you still have a chance. Yeah, you I'll never you know. What, the victory formation. I'll be up there, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll have some fun with it. But you'll be prepared. I think oh, after yeah, seeing yeah, the first yeah, two yeah, weeks, absolutely. you know. Okay, absolutely. we need to go ahead and absolutely. don't loosen up that chin strap. I at just the know end. when we uh, when we in that victory formation, that's a good thing. So that's well, what we plan on being. I in. think Shiano said that if it's a uh, now, if you have 13, you know, if it's an insurmountable last play, you can't come back and win the game, he'll call the dogs off. I don't know. Now, my don't trust said, nobody. Man, my coach, my coach <laughs> trust says nobody. that. My coach says that. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust nobody. You turn he's your still, head for a second. Still, it's still, over. It's still, you see what happened to Sean Lee. Yeah. Ooh, Better keep your head on the swivel man. at all times. Yeah, That's man. That's what he said about yeah. Rondé Barber. He said Rondé Barber is still in the league because people trust him. Yeah. And he blitzes. <laughs> <laughs> and people trust him not to blitz. And he still he's blitzes. Like, he, I think he's the, uh, he's the oldest player in the NFL. 37? Yeah, 37. Mm -hmm. Ray Lewis the second oldest. Mm. And I think London's like third. That's a... That that's crazy. Hey, real quick, they they put on uh, here in the uh, Green Turtle in the corner. They have um, uh, here in Dallas, by the way, Green Turtle here in Dallas, uh, Sterling area. They put the Madden down on the end down there. Uh, ha have you seen the Madden this year's version? Yeah, man. Henson beat me thirteen twelve the other night. Hey, I was winning too. Who man. were you playing with? I don't remember who I had. The Texans. Who were you playing with? I had Carolina. And he beat you. Hey, it was the last. I threw a pick. Yeah, two minutes since I was trying to be greedy. Big players make big yeah. plays. I think this is situation. the best Madden. I think this is the best Madden ever made. It might be. I just the, the stumbling over the feet bothers me. Yeah, it's realistic. Yeah, it's realistic. Yeah, it's realistic. It that that new motion thing yeah. they have on there. Uh, it bothers me, but it's real. Do you guys play with injuries on? Oh yeah, yeah everything. Yeah, he got, he got a game. career mode. I said nah, I, put, I can't keep them injuries on, hey, man. <laughs> I said he got a league going, man. I said oh for real, yeah. So yeah. what what we do is every year, obviously, man. I commission the whole league, man. Me, D'Angelo Hall, guys around the league. We all just get in, pick teams, man. Do a fantasy draft. It's online the case too. Be. Yeah, man. You should let me get in that, man. Yeah, that's man. that's what I need to do right yeah, we there. We got a few spots still open. Perry just dropped out, man. I'm gonna put him on the spot. Perry right. just dropped out because right. he got beat my, too bad. I'll give you my handle. I might try to get in that. <laughs> I, I mean, listen. The intro to the game, <sighs> that might be the best intro of all time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it, when you Ray saw Lewis, it, it, it got you, though, when you mm -hmm. first That's saw Ray it. Lewis. Every time he speaks, he was speaking to that uh, college basketball team before the tournament. <laughs> I was excited. I mean, I, them kids, uh, they had a, uh, you know, deer in the headlight look because they had no idea. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. intense, man. That's him before every game. Like I said, he came out the tunnel last year to hot in here, his own song. I was excited to watch that. Oh, so I was down there. <laughs> I, I remember that. And I actually was – I even – I remember telling my wife, I said, man, guys, stop. They're, they're uh, routines. Yeah. They were looking. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, hey, I was a victim of that. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm stuttering because I'm so excited about it. I'm like, man, he got his own intro. Then he got, they go outside, dig up a patch of dirt on some turf. Yeah. <laughs> and just, like, you know, that's, crazy. that's the air and all that. That's Listen, crazy. man, that guy's still playing at a high level. High I mean, level, you, you can't. Was he 235 this year? Yeah, he lost Slim weight, down. man. Just, you know, he kind of got the speed going there. It's just a culture up there, you know, with that. But uh, did you ever see his uh, his, his uh, speech after they lost to New England in the AFC Championship game? That's amazing. You I could, think you I did. It was on the Football Life the other night. With, oh, it was? Yeah. Okay, yeah, because yeah, you could YouTube that too. Mm -hmm. I mean, you lost the, you know, second biggest game of the, of the year mm -hmm. in all of football, outside of the Super Bowl, of course. And he had them guys, you know, feeling good about themselves. Mm -hmm. Just, just that's leadership. That's true leadership. That's leadership. A as a linebacker, on the defensive side of the ball, would you say linebackers are naturally the the, the leaders of, of a team? I, I got to say it. I mean, and obviously being up here for the last well, few years. I know you going to say, yeah, because you form a <laughs> linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> being up here for the last few years, man, and uh, playing alongside guys like London, man, he says it every week. Linebacker set the tone. Linebacker set the tempo, man. And I, I believe that and live by that before I even met London, man. So when he said that on game days, it was always icing on the cake for me. And we believe that. We truly did. He did say that, man. Linebacker yep. set the tone. Linebacker set the, set the tempo. tempo. Ain't nothing changed but, but the location. location. <laughs> That's it, man. We, <laughs> I mean, you ready to run through a wall, man. You know, guys like Ray Lewis and, and Fletch, man, that, that find ways to continue to improve their game, man, and, and, and just – Outlast time in some situations, they, man. They have. They really have. I <laughs> Who mean, can just stay alive, man. That, I mean, that's nothing that's, but heart. That's, that's character. And obviously, those guys are faith-based guys, too. 
So it just adds that much more to what they do. When you, when you guys think about it, I mean, playing linebacker for 16, 17 seasons, that's – it's not supposed to happen. Oh, it's not no small feat at all. <laughs> it's not a small that's feat not, at all. That's not, I mean, that's something that probably somebody can put up in Guinness Book of World Records or yeah. something. That's not supposed to happen. And, and, and they're not playing for defenses that aren't known to get after it. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're playing on some physical defenses. So my hat's always been off to those guys. As far as offensively, D, who, who would you say as far as uh, on the offense? Is it the quarterback most of the time? It's got to be a quarterback. I think uh, – <clears throat> Just from a, a, a winning franchise standpoint, <laughs> you got to have your quarterback has to be the leader. I think uh, RG3 accepted that role good. But uh, I mean, look at all the elite teams that quarterbacks, you know, step up to the challenge in terms of being the leader, being the role model, for, well, being an example, you know, of what it takes to be a champion and, uh, you know, be successful. You look at Ben Roethlisberger, you look at Aaron Rodgers, all these guys were successful young, yeah. you know, and they yeah. stepped into an you know, important role, yeah. you know, as a, as a young player. And, I mean, that's what I think separates, you know, the guys, you know, Jake Locker, the Ponders, and all those guys are starting to come up. I think Big Ben did it early. You yeah. Know, as opposed to having, you know, I think the organization groomed Ben Roethlisberger for what other oh, organizations yeah, yeah. don't do. Yeah. You know. It was, all, it was all there for him. Great yeah. defense as well. Mm -hmm. Basically, he just had to go in there in that first year. I mean, he's handing the ball off to the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just don't mess the game up. Yeah. And we can do some damage here. Do you, do you think RG3, I mean, obviously your teammate, you're, you're, you're one of the guys that I see is pretty close with him. I mean, do you, do you see that he's taking on not just the leadership role of always being positive, but having to get after guys if need be, or is that just not not yet? I think he, he, he does a good job of that. I mean, you can see in practice, you know, he's like, come on, we got to do this. We got to do this. You know, you got to be – this is how this play has to be ran, you know, and it's, it's so uh, – you know, the foundation is there from him. Mm -hmm. The support cast is there from him. We just got to put it all together. But so like if he got on somebody, you wouldn't be – you wouldn't – no one would look at that as prima donna or, nah, you, you know, you can't, who's everyone's, this guy. Everyone's grown men in this business. You can look at him and say he's a rookie. At the end of the day, he's a starting quarterback. He's, he's what's getting known hammered out there too. You know what? That's, that, that's a lot of respect to him right there because anytime you have a quarterback, a running quarterback, you know, take the shots that he's taking. I thought he was dead a couple of times, to be honest with Me you. Me too. He laid he there for a while. Yeah, yeah, I told you, you got to stop being so dramatic. <laughs> yeah, 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 because yeah, 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 I was like, just you take somebody's hand and just get on up slow. <laughs> but, yeah, he would lay there. You know, like, man, this dude, just like three, four seconds, yeah. and he just jumped just straight on up. All right, guys, here we go. I'm like, yeah. I make the defense mad. So, As a hey. defender, wouldn't you be like, oh, okay. I'm going to oh, really yeah. make sure you stay yeah. there next I tell time. You, I tell you what, Robert Griffin is one of the most genuine dudes. I tell you, he gets in people's faces, though. I ain't going to even lie to you. During the game, you'd be like, man, that's Griff. <laughs> oh, I saw uh, – I saw uh, – even in the Rams game, yeah. they tried to spare him. He got on there. But in this game, but it was, he took the lay hit uh, on the sidelines, and, and I saw him actually I literally ran, like – I ran in there too. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, my quarterback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were sitting right there. I'm like, man, this guy, uh, he, he, it's almost like he likes the contact. I know that sounds crazy coming from, you know, a quarterback standpoint, but he seems like he wants to uh, – Show people you're not knocking me out the game. Yeah, yeah, he got some swag to him, man. It was it was difficult watching him take those hits Sunday. Uh, it, it took me back to the Jason Campbell days. <laughs> I mean, Jason got sacked so hard one time he had a black eye, and we were still trying to figure that out. So, uh, <laughs> but he popped back up, man. Like you said, man, he got a lot of swag to him, and a lot of people think about his swag and his leadership affecting the offense. But it's it's contagious on the defense. You see guys like D. Hall, uh, London Fletcher, just going up to the to him and and. Excited about what the offense is doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because as, as a team, you want to put it all together, man. And and he's not only does it get the offense fired up, it gets your defense fired up as well. And get that crowd fired yeah. up. I mean, the crowd was loud this, this weekend, man. Oh, man. Said, that crowd was nuts. This, this is one of the loudest crowds besides the Dallas game yes. last year. Mm -hmm. And that Dallas game on 2010 Sunday night, that was my first active game, so I was excited. Mm -hmm. But. Them two Dallas games right there was the loudest games. Well, beside, well, I can't say loudest games. I've been in Seattle was the loudest. But oh, no, that's the stadium. Loudest home game. <laughs> yeah, 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 That's yeah, 12 yeah. man in the joke. Man. They talk <laughs> yeah, about that. the wall at the Superdome. is not as loud as nah, Seattle. Man. Nah, nah. It's nah, supposed nah, to be loud in the wall because it's closed to be, in. Nah, nah. But Seattle, just nah. just the way the, I I can't, you know, I the crown of the stadium mm -hmm. is. Yeah. I couldn't hear Rex on the sideline. During the game, I could hear uh, when we played New Orleans. I could hear Griff when I'm in my three-point stands, you know, five yards from him. I can hear him. I was good. Well, maybe that's what happened to the referees on uh, <laughs> on Sunday. Maybe maybe they were hearing that noise, thinking we got to get to our car to get out of here. Yeah, no you comment. know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
you can't say it. I can say it. Yeah, that's exactly what they I'm think, serious. Man. So come on now. These guys are getting intimidated. That's – listen, I mean, Belichick puts his hands on you. Kyle runs you down in the, in the, in the tunnel. Yeah. I mean – Listen, guys are getting intimidated, and as they should. I mm-hmm. mean, they're calling bad calls. But all this is, again, before we get out, you know, take a break real quick, it's the arrogance, and I'm going to say it, it's the arrogance of the NFL. And the NFL has learned their lesson here. You lock your players out last year. Mm-hmm. Now you're going to lock your referees out this year, and you think you don't need either one. Mm-hmm. Think again on that one. <laughs> I mean, the fans determine this thing, and the fans have had enough. And they're like, listen, we don't want to see – like I'm a, I'm a defensive guy. I, 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 I want to see rock 'em sock 'em football. Yeah. I don't want to see guys getting hurt, mm-hmm. and I don't want to see sloppy football. And I think you, you as a player, you know this yourself. All the games that I've seen mm-hmm. have been really sloppy. No flow to the games. Guys getting hurt, and I think that's naturally because of these referees. Hopefully, this will be rectified by this weekend, and uh, you get through your first quarter. That's four games lost, man. I mean, you know, win, lose, or draw, that's four games lost with bad referees. And I can tell you, that Rams game, you guys were in control before that thing got out of hand. So maybe if the referees are there, (laughs) we might be having a different conversation right now. We still got to score, so can't even put it on them. But that's the, that's, the, that's, the, that's the way to look at it. I, just you can score, let me man. say that, that referees just, were not terrible. Even, we can't even put ourselves <laughs> in that situation to let them, you know, determine the outcome of the game. So. And like you said, man, uh, referees are getting a little intimidated. You see Vince Wilfolk in, in the guy's face. That's a big dude, Yeah, man. but I bet he won't run up on Ed Hockey. <laughs> <laughs> So I miss seeing the biceps, I know, man. man. <laughs> you know, I miss seeing. I miss seeing. Uh, who is it? Mike Carey always does the, mm-hmm. the, you know, the first down, first down. You know, I miss those guys. But you know what? My hats off to them because naturally, I don't think I realized how good they were. Mm-hmm. I mean, you That's can true. see. I, I think as players, you guys are going to have a different respect now during the games where <laughs> maybe if there is a pass interference, you probably going to say, yeah, he, he, yeah, he, he mugged them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if there is offensive hold, you're not going to like what's going on. I think this is a good thing for the NFL because now there will be mutual respect across the board with everyone, kind of like with the players, what they went through last year. Guys held their ground, stayed for the call. So we'll, we'll see how this thing plays out. We're going to take a break. Uh, we're live here from uh, Green Turtle here in Dulles, uh, downtown center, uh, Sterling, Virginia. The Dulles Green Turtle. I'm telling you, man, I've been here for three weeks, and I still can't get that right. <laughs> Sitting here with uh, Darrell Young, starting fullback for the Washington Redskins. Uh, Rob Henson, uh, former linebacker here in Washington, uh, you know, NFL free agent right now. That's, you know, uh, Richard Crawford came on your teammate a little bit earlier. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll get into the chat box, ask uh, these guys some of the questions that are filtering throughout there. Hang tight. We'll be back. Sports Journey. Sports Journey Network. Hi, I'm Shannon Doherty. I've played the girl next door and the girl not so next door. I've produced, I've directed, but now I'm doing something I've always wanted to do for me. I'm on my way to getting my college degree. I logged on to Education Connection, the free service that showed me hundreds of schools and degrees so I could pick the right one. Now I'm actually getting my degree in liberal arts online. But you could get yours in business, in culinary arts, in nursing, in criminal justice, even a degree in technology. From my schedule, Education Connection showed me online has the most flexibility. I can study on the set, while traveling, anywhere, anytime. So do something smart for your future. Let Education Connection help you find the right program for free. Log on now and get Education Connection's free success kit, stuffed with information about online degrees, schools, and scholarship advice. Log on now to 41educationmatching.com. Are you stressed over credit cards and other debts, maybe through no fault of your own? Imagine how it would feel to have that weight lifted right off your shoulders. Well, here's some good news from America's trusted name in debt relief. Care One providers have already helped over 4.5 million people in debt, and we can help you today. Just call this toll-free number to speak with a friendly representative, and in just minutes, you'll get your free debt relief analysis. Regardless of your situation, Care One has an option for you. We are there to help, and we do that in a way that's empathetic and supportive without judging their financial situation. The credit card companies, I feel, are trying to keep you in debt and trying to keep it so you owe them money forever. And Care One is a good way to get you out of that and get you out of it fast. A big burden's lifted off of my shoulders. Care One 
threw me a lifeline. Call Care One, they will help you. Get debt relief from a company you can trust. Just call the toll free number today. Health Insurance Update. This just in for all uninsured Americans with or without pre existing conditions. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. Meanwhile, medical problems continue to be the number one cause of bankruptcies. Here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans and yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the number on your screen now and in less than 10 minutes you could receive a choice of affordable plans from the hotline network. This is not a discount card. You will have access to doctors, hospitals, dental care, infant care, and emergency services. Call the health insurance hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Call 800-794-1817. That's 800-794-1817. Call now. Have you ever had an idea for an invention or new product? Bill Schaefer, one of the inventors of Whammo's new splash wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play one hot summer afternoon. Bill invented a car wash for kids. Ride through it, run through it. And Ben Help submitted the splash wash to Whammo, the makers of childhood favorites like the Frisbee, Hula Hoop, and Slip and Slide. If you have an invention you would like to try to patent and submit to corporations and want free information that explains how InventHelp may be able to assist you, call now. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call InventHelp today for free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain on the splash wash. However, most inventions are not successful and Bill's experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventors information, call 1-800-619-2363. That's 1-800-619-2363. Sports Journey. Sports Journey Network. Uh, welcome live back to the uh, <laughs> Dallas Green Turtle here in uh, Dallas, Virginia. You know, we got uh, Richard Crawford back on the show. You know, Robert Hanson still with us. But, uh, yeah, we're going to turn this show into a little fun right now, you know. Stop talking about football so much. I mean, if you want to, you can. But uh, yeah, anything you guys got in mind you want to talk about, me, you know, feel free. You know, whether it be about, you know, his and what your, what your transition has been like, you know, outside of, uh, you know, being here in 2010 and from now. And then Richard, you know, what your transition is like from, you know, starting out as a rook and, you know, basically growing into the player that you are right now. Man, the, uh, the transition has been kind of uh, up and down for me because uh, one moment I'm saying, you know what, I'm done with football. I'm moving into the next part of my life. And then the next moment, like I said, like this past Sunday coming to the game, Knowing all the defensive calls, knowing what coverage we were in, like it just brought back, you know, those memories and wanting to get back out on the field, man. And like you're saying, seeing linebackers who, who I know that I could play better than in some sense, you know what I mean, still out for the other team or whatever. But um, it's been, it's been kind of difficult, man, to be honest with you. Um, like I said, still in limbo, whether or not I should still come back or do or just keep moving. So. Hey, I feel you, man. Like I said, uh, some of the things that you did, man, impressed me a lot. You know, as a player, as a person, you know, the uh, – you know, the background that you had, you know, the just everything you did coming into, you know, the NFL showing that the six-round pick, you know, can make this transition, you know. And uh, just because they say you six-round basically a free agent, you know, some of the things that you did, like I said, I, I respect it, I appreciate it, and I still do. I look at this day now. Some days I don't want to go out there, but I say, you know, what's my man Henson doing? You know, I got I to gotta do something that he would do. Yeah. But I got to hit Mike Sellers hard. <laughs> you, know, you, know, I mean, you know how I used to go down. But, yeah, uh, me and Mike used to have some battles, man. Right. Some big I, I battles know, in the man. trenches, I man. And then following you up, you come right behind <laughs> and smack me. I mean, that's, I think that's one of the big misconceptions, too, man. I think play, people think players just go to practice and we be out there just throwing the ball around. We be out there getting after it, man. Hey. I mean, it's, it's, it's a physical game. It's physical at practice. Yeah. Obviously, you're not trying to yeah. kill a guy, but you definitely want to practice like you play. So Yeah, I, I, this, is all, this is out to all the owners that's listening, general managers. Give Robert Henson a chance, man, because I said – this dude can play, man. I don't, he's 26. Don't don't look at him and say he's older now and got drafted in 09. That means nothing, man. You can look at 
you know, Tannehill, I think, or whoever real, what, was the 28-year-old rookie this year. No, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we, we even go back to Chris Winking when he came to the league. You know what I mean? He, he but, about 35. Yeah. Exactly. You, know, but, uh, you look at it from that standpoint, I mean, you know, some guys going to play baseball and then come back. You look at the, uh, what was his name, the, the punt returner for the Eagles, uh, Jeremy Warner or something like that. No, that oh, was the, the, uh, that's yeah, the Jeremy Boone. Jeremy Boone. Boone. That's yeah. his name. The, you know, he went and skied yeah, he and came back to football for a while, you know. But, uh, you know, what's your transition been like, Mr. Crawford? Uh, you know, just, just trying to find my way, you know, get in the apartment, trying to get a car, trying to, <laughs> you know, just trying to do the little things, you know. Uh, being a seven-round pick, I'm just a, as I like to call it, an overpaid free agent, undrafted free agent, you know. So uh, uh, just trying to trying to humble myself, find, find my ways to study, uh, find my ways to be a pro, you know. Um, watching guys like D.Y., uh, London Fletcher, you know, um, Watch those guys, you know, guys that have been doing it for a while, especially um, London. You got to respect that. Uh, you know, I think he's almost old enough to be my father, you know. <laughs> me being the youngest player on the team, I think he, he, he's close. He's close enough. You know, hey, I said that Fletch, when I, uh, when I first came in here, Fletch, I said, Fletch, when, when did you start, man? I said, when I was in middle school, the first year. <laughs> I wasn't school, even man. in middle school. I know it was elementary school. <laughs> <It's not crazy. laughs> I was in third grade. Hey, but you know what he showed? That's, that's the definition of a true pro right there that's been playing for, you know, this yeah. year 15 for him. And every year guys kind of try to come in and take his position, and it just ain't happening. It ain't because of he thinks he's better than someone. It's just because he goes out there and performs at a high level. You know, the intensity that he brings every week, you know, it just it, that's – that's something. That's an intangible right there. Yeah, I mean, like the way how he just call out plays. Like I want to be like that. Like, like now. But it, I know yeah. it's not gonna happen. But oh, yeah. like, I really yeah. just want to be like, oh, you running this, you running that. Like London be calling out plays. I've seen him be wrong like twice. And I've been here for what like since what May. Getting OTAs with running with London and stuff. Like I only seen him been been wrong twice. And you know? one of the times he was wrong because Rob switched the plays, switched the, <laughs> switched the side. Like, oh, we run this way now, so you want to try to guess out the plays. You man, know? you definitely want to take your career to the next level. I would say follow London Fletcher, man, because like I said, that was the biggest difference for me. Uh, just listening more than talking. I did a lot of talking my rookie year. <laughs> 2010 was a listening year, man. So uh, Fletch can definitely do that. I mean, even even you know you playing cornerback, he's. I mean, the guy has a ton of knowledge, so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you look at Fletch from a standpoint of he played on the Super Bowl team. He knows what it takes. You know, he won the Super Bowl. Uh, I mean, but like you said, there's a lot of guys that you can look at. There's a lot of guys that, you know, show the bad examples of what an NFL pro should be mm -hmm. doing. For sure. You know, but uh, I look at you coming in, and I said from day one, I said this kid can play, but he's a great character dude. And I think that's what Shanahan did a great job of, you know, just bringing guys in of great, you know, character, magnitude, guys that go out there and work hard, guys who want to win, guys who – you know, and not just going to be on this team to go party and stuff like that. But, you know, you look at a guy like Phillip, Phillip Daniels, I used to run him over, man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to run through Phillip, man, on goal line. <laughs> nah, but, uh, you know, I, I appreciate y'all coming out, man. It's, yeah, I appreciate this a lot. It's a big help for me, man. You know, I'm just trying to help Blake, you know, Lake. His show is up and coming, man. You know, him and his wife come out. They supported me. They found me, you know, said – uh. You know, they wanted me to help them, you know, build their broadcasting network and stuff like that. And I said, well, I want to help y'all. Oh, I want y'all to help me get my face out there, too. So I got to do some other things, you know. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been a blessing, man. I can honestly say it's been a blessing, man. It's been the longest three years of my life or four seasons, you know. Like I said, Henson was one of the only guys we had this conversation when I said, you know, when I got released, he was one of the only guys to call me, you know. And I said, you know what, man, this is a business more so than his pleasure, you know. And I was living in his basement. I had a room down there, and I was getting ready to move out. The next day they released me, you know. So it's kind of a blessing that I didn't go sign a lease or something like that. But I just say, man, being a young guy in this league, you know, just uh, I'm still young too, but I, I have game experience. So keep your head up. Adversity is going to happen. It's how you – they don't want to see you make them same mistakes twice, you yeah. know. So, uh, you know, regardless if you give up a touchdown, Ray Lewis gives up touchdowns probably every week. But – Every other play that he does, you're like, man, that dude is a beast. You won't see the, you know, the stuff that he does wrong just because he's gonna be so positive about things and hype his team up. So, That's true. like I said, keep keep your head up, man. You got a lot of, you know, success coming your way just because you're a good dude. And you know, I, I, I respect you, man. I respect you. I like you. <laughs> I like you, man. But yeah, but Henson, man, you know, I appreciate you coming out too, man. Like I said, it's been a while, man, since I seen you. I know, right? I'm happy, happy, happy you safe, man. That's all, man. No, man. Still standing on your feet. I always use the example of the terrain, man. I'm glad you keep your head above water, man. Got That's you. all that matters right now. Like I said, when that phone rings, man, I know you'll be ready. So I know the type of person you are. So and I appreciate that about y'all. But 
You know, anything else y'all want to talk about? Man? I mean, you know, we in D.C. You know, how the how the Wizards looking this year? I mean, do I have to convert, <laughs> oh, hey, man, do I have to convert to a Wizard fan? You know, I, I'm from California. You know, I'm all about the Lakers. Man, you know, you better stay with the Lakers, boy. Yeah, boy. <laughs> <laughs> we looking real nice down there. Nah, you know, nah, nah. Kobe, hey. Dwight, Steve nah, Nash. Man, y'all ain't going to win. Ron Artest. <laughs> if his mama call him Ron, I'm going to call him Ron. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Better world peace. <laughs> You know, real peace. Yeah. Man, y'all better get some help out there, man. Y'all need a – y'all still need a bench. I know y'all brought Anton Jameson in, but he's 38, man. Yeah. <laughs> All you got to do is pop out and shoot, you know. As you, you know, go That's down and get a couple That's what they use Meta for, but he ain't – He ain't shooting nothing, no, man. No, he ain't no, shooting no. nothing. Meta is a defensive specialist. He's supposed to guard LeBron James. That's he's what we supposed to guard LeBron he's James. Supposed, he's supposed to. You know, just shot him a little bit. Make sure he don't go over 35 points. And nah, that's kind of hard to do, brother. I'm yeah, the biggest you know, LeBron fan. Oh, that's cool. You know, as long as he <laughs> don't outscore boy. Kobe, he did his job. So, if we had a if we had an NBA 2K, well, we were all in the NBA. Right now, what, what would team? What team would you be wanting? To, what team would you want to play for? Uh, I I'd, I'd be Ron though for the Celtics. You know, I'm I'm running that thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm it's a terrible comparison. It really what is. Though, man. No game, man. How can you Ron score 44 points one night <laughs> and score two the next? Hey man, that's not his job. His job <laughs> right. is to give his right. team what right. they need. Right. But I, I respect. Ron. I like Ron. I'm not gonna say say that. Yeah. But you I mean you look like him a little bit? But <laughs> <laughs> no. But I'm just saying. Jokes, I mean. Jokes, jokes. <laughs> Nah, I think I had to play for the Knicks, man. You know, I'm a New York guy. Oh, my God. Hey, I'm just saying, man. I'm a New York guy, man. I'm you Knicks. just want to see Spike yell every Hey, every week, <laughs> every game. <laughs> we be in the same spot. Hot. Every game. Like, why are we with not a winning? throwback jersey. Yeah. <laughs> with Jeremy Lin jersey. A Harvard jersey. <laughs> no, he, he had somebody stitching it in the basement somewhere. Boy, Jim, Jeremy Lin got to be the biggest story overnight I've ever oh, seen in my absolutely. life. That boy went out there and balled. Hey, I, I said that. I hey, have a nice contract. Boy. I use that. I use that example all the time, man. You just got to be consistent with it. I think Jeremy Lin was a good player. I just don't. Um, from a defensive standpoint, I think he struggles. You know, yeah, but he, uh, you know, I, I oh yeah, you saw that against the Heat, though. Yeah, you saw that against the Heat. They exposed. <laughs> exposed. But hey, like I said, you know, there's a lot of guys that get exposed every week. It just happened to be him because he was just in the spotlight of you know a big city. And, and, and plus, so well for nine games. And plus, you know, like when you when you reach this position, when you well, I know this being an underdog, when you're an underdog and you're coming up. People are looking for you to fail if they want you to because, like, that many people cannot be wrong, you know what I'm saying, about you. So, like, you know, people take that to heart. Like, but they're going to criticize you harder than, than most. You know, if you look at every underdog in the world, you know, everybody criticizes them when they make one little mistake. I mean, when you're an underdog, you, you have to be close to perfect, you know. So Yeah, but when they do have good games as an underdog, everybody blows it up too as well. That's true. So That's let me true. ask you guys this, though. So uh, you, we all know, or do you feel like it takes – maybe one or two games to get a big contract in any professional sport. Absolutely. In, 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 fo in football, <laughs> like, I feel like it, well, from my position, you know, you can have one or two big games. It don't matter. If you go out there and give up 15 touchdowns, son, you're not getting yeah. a contract. You know? <laughs> but, like, uh, for basketball, I really feel like if you go out there and score 40 points twice, oh, you're going to get a contract. Yeah. You know, that's, that's a Jeremy Lin situation. That's what I mean, saying, like, he, he shine for nine games. I'm not – not, I'm, I'm a Knicks fan, so yeah. you know, I'm not hating, but – he signed for nine games. So what did he get? 30, 30 million just now from the Rockets. So, yeah. I mean, like you said, <laughs> basketball is different from football, baseball, all that. I mean, baseball, you know, those guys go through a transition where they have to go, you know, double A, triple A, all that stuff. And yeah. then, you know, once you make the ma once you make the majors, you're making the big bucks, and there's no salary cap, you know. But uh, I mean, I mean like, A-Rod money is stupid. Yeah, I mean, it's a 300, <laughs> stupid, 300 mil. 265. His car drives itself. I've seen it on TV. <laughs> but, but think about he this. He signed, he signed 265 with the Yankees, but he signed for 225 with the Rangers a couple years before that. So he's technically double dipping. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, because all baseball money is guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> guaranteed. That's crazy, though. But yeah. uh, how about we do this? Y'all big basketball fans. Who's your who's the best point guard in the league right now? You think? Oh man. Point guard CP3, son. What you oh, mean? Oh nah. Chris nah. Pa Chris Paul. He dishes it. He play defense. You know, I mean, he be having off. He nights. plays defense. You know, he has off nights. You know, but he can shoot. I mean, most point guards are like either a scorer or they, they they can't dish. You know, Chris Paul can score and dish. You know, like Rondo, for instance. Like he's not a consistent scorer, but he can dish the ball. You know, he will. I mean, uh, 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 Darren, Darren Williams too. You Darren know, he, Williams. He's so underrated because he on that that that, that sorry team right now. Yeah. You know, I mean. Oh man. <laughs> Darren Williams is a beast, man. I got to give Darren it to Darren. Williams is a beast. I didn't know about Darren Williams because D. Brown overshadowed him. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> Illinois, you know, so I really didn't hear about Darren Williams until he became the star with the Jazz. But I right, ask you another question. You know, off the off the subject of the uh, the point guards, Andrew Bynum or D. Howard, who are you taking? 
Hey, you know what? Um, I can give you the real analysis on Andrew Biden. All right, break it down for me. You're a Lakers you know fan. Break it down. Okay, the thing about Andrew Biden is, <laughs> you know, the Lakers. You about to get into it now? Look at all sophisticated. <laughs> the thing about Andrew Biden is, is that he is when he has when he wants to be, he is the best center in basketball. Now, from from <laughs> watching the games, he consistently is not always there. He's consistently not always the best center. You know, sometimes, you know, his knees hurt. You know, yeah. something. You know, he got injuries and stuff. You know, so he. I mean, he, from game to game, you know, he's not as dominant as he should be for how much talent he is. You know, I feel like Andrew Bynum could dominate a, a season, eighty-two games. Is that? Up. But is that unreal expectations though? Because sometimes I mean, that, we. That really is. Because I feel like I'm a big LeBron <laughs> fan. I feel like LeBron should dominate, score 35, 40 points every game. And hey, we got some messages in the chat box, man. They said, uh, "Celtics Nation, stop hating him." Oh my God, that must be my boy Brian, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got another guy. They said, uh, you know, he's asking. Uh, this is guest four seven four asking, "What do you guys think about?" You know, we're coming on a sports journey with Lake Lewis. Lake Lewis is the guy, you know, mm -hmm. hosts the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I love this, man. That's why I came back on for the second segment, you know. I love this show. <laughs> man, like, great guy, great opportunity, man. Uh, I'm still learning the radio thing, kind of. Got my own thing kind of going or whatever. So, a great guy to watch. Up and coming, man. Hey, I tell you what, man, I respect the show a lot just because he seeked me out, you know, just to uh, – you know, kind of make me better myself as a person and kind of understand what to say in the media and what not to say. But, uh, you know, so I respect Lake for everything he's doing. Like I said, his wife and, you know, kid, they support me through everything. So, you know, I kind of, like, became a, you know, a little brother just to that family. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, I have a uh, – you know, we all family, we all family. We all related. We all related. But, uh, you know, I, I just look at, you know, Hanson, you got a voice for this, man. I heard you when you first came on the first segment. I'm like, man, look at Hanson, man. You sound kind of good on him. <laughs> man, it's kind of funny because hey, uh, me and my boy Brian, who probably sent that message, man, <laughs> me and him go back and forth, man. We got a uh, radio show to come on Monday nights on uh, XSN Radio or whatever. Uh, so, I mean, you guys can go follow the show at XSN Radio as well, man. Me and my boy Brian be on there. Really don't have a, a title for the for the show yet. We just call it the Rob and Brian Show. So I hey. think we're gonna stick with that, man. Hey. But Robin I love Big, it, man. Robin I enjoy Big. it. Rob and Big got a show. I, I like that. Yeah, you keep that, man. Long, <laughs> hey, he is. Yeah, <laughs> Brian, Brian, good people, man. He said. Uh, he said I taught Henson. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He I, had I a think, hand in I this. think uh, I think we should bring Sports Journey to Texas, man. You know, Henson's a good dude. <laughs> oh, the Dallas, <laughs> Dallas, Fort Worth, Arizona. Hey, so. <laughs> you know, we got a little rivalry game coming up this week. You know, SMU versus TCU. Ooh, man, y'all do not want it. Hey, well, hey, last time I checked, we won last year. Man, you know what? I think I've lost it. I lost to SMU one time, and that was right after the OU victory in yeah, 05. Yeah, I remember that. I y'all got talk, lucky, man. Talk about that, you know, but, but last year. That's the biggest win in, in college history, isn't it? They, they, look, they telling see, stories about see, it still, ain't it? See, nah, nah. See, the thing, what had happened last year is that. <laughs> what had happened was you lying now. <laughs> see, what had happened last year is that we was really smashing these dudes mm -hmm. like 20 four to seven and our best rush linebacker got hurt so you yeah. know we started just playing coverage you know and they start kind of trying to come back you know but we still won though. yeah i left that game in the third quarter man i ain't gonna lie i was mad no i mean like we were really smashing them like yeah. it, was, it was bad like I, I was, frogs, huh? they had a little they had a little running back man who was getting it in oh yeah exactly we exactly. couldn't stop exactly. him man he was, yeah. you know obviously it wasn't a, a robert henson that linebacker there so y'all can take advantage <laughs> of the opportunity but hey, i mean i mean y'all really did miss uh Tanner Brock, yeah, y'all you know, really did. Yeah. I felt like I felt like he was I felt like he was a better at it too. I mean, they both had two outstanding linebackers, but I felt like Tanner was better than the other linebacker. I mean, Tank was making plays, but I feel like they really missed Tanner that game. So. That's one thing about TCU linebackers, man. We all come back. Uh, it started with with David Hawthorne. He's with uh, New Orleans now, man. He was with Seattle, did his beast. thing. Beast, yeah, man. Beast. We call him the Heater. He had he, that name since he TCU, still man. Got it. He can that boy bring the wood. So, still got it. I mean, it started with him. He came back, put the pressure on me and Daryl Washington, yeah, Tank Darryl, Carter, yeah. all those guys, man. So we just try to keep it going. Oh, we, we tried to keep it going or whatever. So we try and start a little something at SMU. You know, we fall behind y'all right now. You know, but we try. We try. Yeah, y'all, y'all coming up, man. We I, to I didn't, up. you know, I didn't think June Jones was gonna change too much, but you guys got it going pretty much. We ain't gonna <laughs> talk about Villanova. It ain't hey. basketball season yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know y'all had a football team. They gonna talk about me bad on my own show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, y'all had a football team. So, like, last hey, so, year. hey, Brian Westbrook, we had, me and Aldrick had, oh, Aldrick and I had this conversation. I got Brian Westbrook. I got Howie Long. I got Brian Finner. And that's three of the big names. 
SMU, I can't name nobody besides the people what? I the know. What, the Pony Express, man? Eric Dickerson? Boy, okay, Eric mean? Dickerson, who else? Come on. Eric Dickerson. Hey, you testing uh, me now. Uh, <laughs> who else? Uh, Doak Walker. We got an award name after uh, our, our That's two. Emmanuel Walker. Sanders is pretty good. Uh, man, um, E-Man. Um, there's another dude. Uh, what's the receiver's name? See, you, uh, you don't even know him. Hold up, hold up. Forrest Gregg, Raymond Berry. There you go. That's what I'm Raymond Berry, Forrest Gregg. You know, I could I could go on hard drives. I had to hype the school a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Howie Long, you know. I can kill this whole conversation. LT. Yeah, okay. I got me. I got Howie Long. Man. I mean, but we, we got, got Ed. Long. Ed, well, you know, he ran straight up six three. Absolutely, ran straight yeah, up. absolutely. Yeah, he, yeah, he got paid a lot of money when he was there. We ain't gonna nah. talk about that though. <laughs> We're not gonna talk about league, that. Yeah, all that is on the video. Everybody was cheating. All right, uh, look at SU getting blamed for this. Everybody crazy. was cheating. Texas, Texas, and they just don't want to take. Looking at passing the blame quickly. Yeah, yeah. Hey. snitching. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna snitch. We got hey, snitched on national TV. I got I got beef with SMU though. All right, let's go way back. Y'all, y'all hand signal yeah, kind of looks like close. a pony, I'm but it's too close to our yeah, horn frog we, signal. We were talking about that. I was like, you know, I think we kind of need to change that because, like, we just look too close. I mean, I understand we're only, like, 35 minutes apart, but we just – everything we do is too close. Yeah. Like, way too close. Like, we know all the same people. It's just, it's just too close. You know? <laughs> we, got, we, got a, uh, we, got a, we got a question in the chat box. What's the best conference in college football? Oh my God, that's hands down, man. SEC is close SEC, as you're going to get to the NFL. But the that's thing about said, the, the SEC is like, there you really. Go. go ahead. No, like, go. I'm, I'm just trying to be honest. You know, SEC is the best conference head to toe. But, like, really, when you think about it, there's really like two or three dominant teams that is consistently dominant in the conferences. Like, when you think about Alabama what and conference LSU, are y'all in? Man, don't worry about what conference <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm not, I wasn't being small. I'm asking. <laughs> we in the conference, you would say, I'm we, saying, we I'm thinking, to the Big East next year. Though. I'm thinking Arkansas is Big East accepting everybody Oh, yeah, Big East is terrible. Hey, first of all, first terrible. of all, still, San Diego. Sam Houston State in the Big East now. Wasn't San Diego one pause. double A? Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> it's STSU, dog. Don't, don't do that. The don't Big East. That. I know he didn't say the Big East just now. Yeah. <laughs> We're private school, man. We can't we can't. Hey, we either. private too, you know. But Big 12 swag. Shout out to TCU boys. TCU. You know? I got a lot of respect, Shout out to man. SMU. Let's go ahead and have this business on Saturday. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to shout my school like Hey, man. me and my man Carl going to have to get a, a friendly little uh, – <laughs> Thing going, but you know you gonna have to wear a TCU shirt the week all week at practice or something. Hey, tell my boy DY make sure you hey, get that done. Do that. Everybody do will that. disclaim me if, if that happens. At SMU, hey, like. that's that's. Best player ever at Villanova. Best player ever at TCU. Best player ever at SMU. Well, let's lay this out. Howie Long is the best player to play at Villanova. Mm. I mean, to me, it, it's like it's between two running backs. You know, you got Doe Walker, the award is named after. That means he was cold back right. then. Well, I guess so, the running backs, I have to keep in that category. And Eric, I'm saying Eric Dickerson rushed for 2,000 yards. Yeah. You know. You're right. I, say, I mean, I have to say Brian Westbrook, who was one of the first backs to rush 4,000 and receive 4,000. Yeah, you okay. got a point. Okay. So you okay. have a very good point. Okay. Okay. You know, very good point. LaDainian Thompson, man. I don't even need to say He's nothing about, about LT. I'm from San Diego. I'm from San Diego. Hall of Famer, man. It's a Hall of Famer. That's a good one. I can't even – I can't say nothing about that because they yeah. signed back to a one-day contract. That yeah. him <laughs> so he the man for that. But uh, You get paid for one-day contracts? Probably. Nah, nah, nah. He might get a little Probably workout like check. Cents. I got four state basketball rings, man. You got school. four state basketball My rings? school got six in a row. Hey, hey uh, Matt Castle got rings too. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Howie Long does have a Super Bowl too. And I won my one double A. My school won one double A championship in 09. But. I can't say that. I can't because it was my class. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was I was with the Redskins then. So. <laughs> <laughs> you going to get a, a, a graduate that's ring? <laughs> Come back and get that alumni last ring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can honestly say I've never been a part of a championship team in my life. Yeah, yeah. Every that's normally time. how I go with SMU. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm throwing blows, man. I'm throwing yeah, blows. Throw blow. Go ahead, man. Let me oh, let you finish your statement. <laughs> You know, they, they kind of dominate the little Mountain West a little bit. You know, who, who else was in there besides Air Force? This is Academy. Hey, thing. remember when Boise was in there? We handled business, too. Hey, first of all, if Boise had a kicker, we would, they might have been in hey, that Hey, that ain't got nothing to do with that. Really <laughs> that ain't his business. <laughs> that ain't my business, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I, got a question. Like, I, got a qu I got a question right here, though, not to interrupt you. What's the best college football team in Texas? TCU, man. <laughs> TCU is the best college football team in Texas. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. I'm going to do my man crawl right here. I'm going to say, hold on, let me explain. All right. Over the last three, four years, we've had more guys drafted out of TCU than Texas, uh, Texas Tech, 
A&M, we had more guys drafted into the I NFL and still on active I rosters. That. I respect that's that. That's true. That's true. You know what? I'm not going to lie. TCU guys, when they actually get drafted, they, they stick. They produce. They, they produce. But the same with SMU. You know, our 10 guys, we stick. <laughs> 10 <laughs> guys, 10 years. That's SMU. <laughs> <laughs> we stick. What's your verdict on uh, Vaughn uh, uh, in Denver? Vaughn Miller. So what's the verdict on Vaughn Miller? Vaughn, beast, man. I like I like his game. Low center gravity, man. Great with his hands. You see him. He had tackles on skates, man, when he played against him. So, oh, yeah, 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 guys, guys. I did, I thought he was undersized at outside linebacker or a defensive end uh, when they came in or whatever. But uh, uh, he's he's holding his own. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. Like I said, he's a young aggressive guy who is on the NFL PA board. You know, yeah. As a as a rookie, he mm -hmm. was he was representing the NFL during the lockout. So, uh, you know, shout out to him for you know stepping to a position like that. You know, being a rookie and you know, already fighting against the owners. I yeah. think that says a lot about your character exactly. that you want to be here and you're here to help guys as opposed to, you know, just in it for the money. You know, and that's what I'm kind of, uh, you know, I'm doing my sports management program right now. You know, just to say that, you know, I want to be athletic director when I'm done. You know, guys making that transition, you know, between the ages of 18 to 25, mm -hmm. whether it be after football or, you know, whether coming into college. And I want to kind of explain to them what this process is like, that it's a business at yeah. the end of the day. And, you know, you may not be doing something wrong. It's just that that, might, guy, might, that guy might have gotten drafted higher than you. No reason why he's gonna be here, you know. So, you know, uh, I got some more man stuff in the, the chat box. They talking about Josh Larebus. He's a teammate. Rice gets my vote. Rice is terrible. I told you, Paul, I said Forrest Greg. Greg. Al Robinson. Uh, I mean, that's that's, that's yeah. everybody I know. <laughs> that's this this year. Hey, let me tell you something about <laughs> Alex Robinson though. You know. He was 24 at SMU. You know? 24 years old? No, he was 24. Oh. He wore number 24. Yeah, we call him 24. That's terrible. He, he he does, but he does one thing, though, <laughs> and he does it really well. He just goes deep, and he catches the ball. Pause. He, he, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> he has a school record for the three longest pass plays. I think it was like yeah. 99, 96, 94. I mean. Hey, but uh, don't you guys run wrong. Texas, the version of Texas Tech offense? Nah, Coach Jones is way different from Texas Tech. Texas Tech is like – uh, they run like more like stutter, stutter chatter routes. Like Coach Jones' offense is more everything speed vertical, cutting, okay. speed cutting, vertical, way different. I couldn't tell because I think quarterback was on the back most of the time we played y'all. So hey, you know I wasn't. He never really got a pass you know, off. All I know is when I, I know was you weren't there, but you, you know we you, you were still wearing the jersey. So uh, we, hey, we got we got some in the chat box. So I got nothing but this from Jay Little. I got nothing but love for TCU, but the Horn Frogs are one in twenty-eight versus Texas. Ooh. One in twenty-eight. One in twenty-eight versus Texas. Ooh. Man, listen. That sounds like that sounds like that sounds like, that sounds like a wait, Wikipedia wait, 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 wait. fact, huh? Yeah, it sounds like some Wikipedia <laughs> stuff. One in twenty-eight. Now we'll admit in two thousand seven, man, we went down there, shocked those guys first half. We had them down 10-0. and then all of a sudden, man, the, I don't know what happened, man. They just came back. We started dropping punts. Punter dropped the ball. I think he was betting on the game, so I don't know what happened, man. But they came back and beat us twenty-eight ten, so. And they said, uh, there's another question. That can you uh, can you cover uh, locks? Locks, huh? I'm going to I'm have to talk to, I'm gonna have to, talk to Al about that, man. Yeah, it's going to be a LeRon Landry and Clint Porter's race, ain't it? Hey. <laughs> that was, that was a good race, though. That was a good race, man. That was a good race. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to race Al. He'll beat me in a race. Yeah, it, I mean, y'all know 40 yards. Y'all be right there, though. But we'd be close. You know, but he's not a 100 runner. He's a 200 runner. He ain't no 100 runner, though. Yeah, but, you know, he got a nice little bump. Man, you oh, mess yeah, with yeah, Al, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I told Al one day he looked like uh, Sean uh, McCoy. McCoy. Yeah. Just like I told him <laughs> Stan. I called Stan from Martin, too. <laughs> <laughs> he looked just like McCoy, man. But uh, they said another great TCU player was uh, Hall of Famer Bob Lilly. Yeah. Man, that's, that's Big great Bob. Great player right there, man. Good player right there. Hey, Sammy Ball, man. Come on Sammy, now. Oh, Sammy Come Ball on now. From there. Get your Redskin facts now. Hey, Sammy Ball. Hey, from Sammy. There. I didn't even <laughs> think about that. He That's that purple, man. 33. You know? <laughs> Purple's a royal color, brother. <laughs> royal. They wear 33 had to be a beast, dog. You just had no choice. Man, they didn't. I think they were just That's picking up awful. jerseys when they was playing back then. They didn't really care. Because he could play everything. Yeah. Man, we, got, we got another Defense. question in uh, the chat box. I said, Mr. Young, if you could play, if you play the Rams again, you please shut up James Laranitis. Was James like James, James yeah, like nice talking? He, he, he was bad on the sideline. He was yapping, I, huh? I had to say something. But like, he was on the sideline because though. he he tried to hit RG three. He missed, and then like he was like saying something. I was like, dog, you, you missed the tackle. Like, what do you what do you have to say? <laughs> Your daddy <laughs> was a wrestler. He's a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I come on, man. Come he on, made, man. When he made a play and he started talking. Like, okay, you can talk when you make yeah, a play. Yeah, he rolled with you. So would you consider him an actor for that? I would have to say so. That's like me on Sunday giving the touchdown and like getting up like talking trash. Like, no, you can't say anything. You have 
Pops was before. the animal too, though. Hey, yeah, I, I tell you what, that, that's one thing that kind of has changed about the game too, man. A guy gets a four yard carry, not for a first down, three four yard carry, and he get up talking trash. Like you got three yards, congratulations. You get back forward. in the huddle. You fell yeah, forward. Yeah, come on. Like, like, oh, they said uh, the guy from North Carolina said, "Can you cover Lake running routes, though? You think you can cover Lake?" Lake right I mean, here, we, we got to find out. You know, I never judge a book by its cover. You know, you got to go out there. I ain't going to lie to you. I do. I go, do. Out, there and get on the I go field. out there on Sundays, but I, I see give, somebody, but uh, he ain't. <laughs> I'm about to thump. Yeah. I give all receivers respect. You have to. You have to respect. You have to respect all receivers when you go out yeah, there. Big <laughs> Big dunk. <laughs> It might be a little different coming through the A-gap as opposed to running routes, huh? You got a little something coming through the A-gap? I played football in high school, like 25 years ago. What position did you play? I played wide receiver. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That, I, I really was a receiver. Like, I really didn't start playing corner until my freshman year in college. We I had was, this conversation earlier in the meeting. Right? I'm a converted receiver. You know, I want the ball in my hands. I really do. No, the reason no. why this conversation came up this morning. Yeah. Because they try to, they try to, they try to get on my head about my releases. Like Raheem well, was talking about my receiver releases. Like you know, you not your receiver releases. Like, I was like, man, don't try me. You <laughs> want me to get out here and do some receiver releases? Can nobody guard Listen, me? There's a reason why they're called defensive backs. They knock the ball down. You know, <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> you know? My hands are very good as a receiver. You're not going to tell me my hands are not as good. What as receiver are we talking about? Tight end blocking receiver? <laughs> or like right, so I'm <laughs> talking about a possession receiver. Right, so let's you. so let's let's pose a question. So who had what defensive back has the best hands in the league? You think? D. Hall got top five. He got to be. He got to be top. Five, he got to be top three actually. D. Hall, top five man. That one hand. Maybe maybe Ed Reed. Reed. Ed Reed got one. Hot, he got man. he got He's number one. Hot. I think C. Wood got number two. C. Woodson. And then I give D. Hall three. Man, like Ed Reed, one of the only guys I've ever seen break on a on a dig route and then go back and cover the post and get an interception. <laughs> You know what? Palomalu plays like that too. He just gets gassed a little bit. More. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. But Palomalu, man, you look at watching Troy. He did a he did a three sixty spin into the line of scrimmage and had a, a four yard tackle. Oh, he doesn't line. have a Troy he Wildcat. Have a scheme, Troy man. Wildcats. He yeah, he don't. He don't have. It's the it's the, the LL rule, the Leron like Landry rule. <laughs> I like it though. Get I in like where Troy. you fit in. Get in where you fit in, Leron <laughs> Landry rule. Troy, Troy make plays. You gotta like that though. Yeah, he does, man. He's been uh, productive in this league for a long time, man. I just. It would be nice to see him stay healthy this year, you know, just oh, for the sake yeah. of, you know, his, his career. And I know he uh, played through eight concussions, he said, man. Play, played through eight concussions. Those concussions are getting serious. It's terrible, man. It's I've terrible. never been concussed before in my life. Hey, knock I got on one wood. last year, man. Hey, knock on wood, man. Don't yeah, say never. Know. Just say I, I I've been fortunate enough not to, you know, have a concussion. <laughs> It's nothing, nothing to play with, though, man. It's nothing to play with. But uh, how about we did a Play 60 event last week where, uh, you know, you get inner city kids. They were actually from Sterling. And, uh, you know, they had a concussion set, uh, station set up. I thought that was important. You know, these kids are 11 to 12, you know, elementary school. And, you know, I thought that was, you know, important to, you know, where sports are going nowadays in terms yeah, yeah. of, you know, the aggressiveness, the, you know, amount of plays that guys are doing, you know, and, uh, you know, the impact of the game. It's just changing, man. Like I said, I couldn't imagine having a leather helmet <laughs> playing <laughs> back in the day. I mean, I know how, like, how I like to play. I leave yeah. with my helmet. You know, that's my game. A leather helmet, though, man. No face mask. I always thought that was interesting. That <laughs> Your offensive swag has to be so low. It's so low. Like, so you, low. you go on, <laughs> where you go, you look terrible. <laughs> a leather helmet? Leather helmet, man, with the strap. One strap. <laughs> that's like a one ball face mask, man. That's, that's pretty bad, what? too, man. That's like a DB <laughs> coming out there with the, with the, the uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the one ball. The one ball. The, <laughs> <line back, laughs> the D line face mask. <laughs> To Jack Lambert back in the day. That's what it was. That's crazy, man. That's crazy. It's a good time tonight on this show, man. We got to do this more often. You be, be cross eyed the DB trying to look for the ball. Like, oh, the ball. Oh, I can't man. see. Yeah, man. Back to the kids. I mean, that, that's, that's interesting because as a youngster, man, you know, if, if, we, had, if we did have a concussion, or we, I mean, we didn't know it. That's what I said, too. I mean, I looked at the kids and I said, you don't understand how blessed you are right now to be in this situation because. When I was six and seven, I didn't know, eleven and twelve. I didn't worry about a torn ACL. I didn't worry about being yeah. concussed. You know, so I look at it now, and it's like, man, these, they're preparing these kids to, you know, understand what, you know, the outcome could be possibly if you know you play through these symptoms and you know you, uh, you know, put yourself self in a situation where you're not understand, you're not not able to understand, you know, what your life will be like, be like in thirty years. So I, I thought that was important, man. Like I said, I'm involved in a lot of charity events, man. I do a lot of Thanksgiving turkey drives. Um, you know, I back to school coat drive. You know, I, I go to talk and hand out. You know books and stuff like that for kids and I just feel you know I think it's a it's an honor man I'm living my dream 
And people always come up to me and say, you know, what's the biggest difference between, you know, your life now and what it used to be? And I say, you know what, my parents have prepared me to be in this lifestyle, you know, just because my, my dad is such a great dude that, you know, he cleaned banks for me in college just to allow me to, you know, be able to do what I wanted to do. And I said, listen, you know, it hurt my heart, you know, a couple months ago, he said, I'm going to go get another job. And I said, dad, I'm in the NFL, man. Like, I'm not going to let you do that. You know, I'm not saying I'm the richest guy, but we're not going to struggle. Yeah. You know, so I look at it from that standpoint, man. I think every player in this league has a story to tell. And I think, you know, you look at the successful rappers, you know, successful, you know, people in this world, they had a story to tell behind what, you know, what led them to their dreams and stuff like that. So, you know, you look at it from that standpoint, man, everybody's, you know, has, you know, everyone is purpose driven. You know, you look at it from that standpoint, you know, everyone has motives and, you know, you know, things that they, you know, problems that they've encountered that they had to overcome, whether it be family, whether it be off the field, whether it be, you know, drug addiction, mm -hmm. whether it be, you know, losing family members or something like that, you know, but, uh, like you said, man, it just it's just different, man. This this lifestyle is good when you're in it. But I always use the example, man, it's such a business that, you know, it's hard to get close to people because you never know what yeah, tomorrow is going to bring. Exactly. I hate Tuesdays. I'm not going to lie to you. I hate them. I got cut on a Thursday, but I hate Tuesdays because that's when they make, you know, the – you know, they, they make the changes, whether it be practice squad, whether they, you know, release a guy because he's not hustling hard enough, which, mm -hmm. we, you know, which we've seen, you know. And being around Shanahan, you never know what's going to happen. He always says he's going to play the best, but there's always those situations where there might be another guy on another team that's shining yeah. and got released because of something that happened off the field that's going to, you know, lead to you being released because he was a fourth-round pick, but I'm balling, you know. So, yeah. like you said, it's a business at the end of the day. I respect everything about this. I'm going to live my dream to the fullest, but I'm going to also get this Masters right now to the yeah. NFL. <laughs> I'm going to use them. I'm going to let them know I'm going I'm to be in that position one day where I can groom people. You know, I want to be a player development guy like Philip Danger. done. Played 15 years in the league. You know, and now you look at he's telling stories, you know, basically helping us with his experience, experiences. You know, he holds life skill meetings, you know, with the rookies every Monday. And it's something that we went through, you know, nothing yeah. different. Did we pay attention? Probably not because yeah. we didn't understand that. But, you know, four years later, now we're like, man, that's crazy. Oh, well, Phil told us that four years ago. But yeah. now, now we're starting to buy into that, you know. And that's, that's the heart of mature, you know, maturity of the game and stuff. And, you know, just being out there. You know, every Sunday, just, you know, seeing guys like, I, I ain't going to lie, sometimes I get I get excited to see other dudes on the team just because I like to watch, you know, the game, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm a big fan of the game as as much love as I have, well, you know, for as much love as I have, you know, of the game, you know. But uh, like I said, man, it's a dream come true, man. I'm happy. I'm in a position where I want to yeah. be, you know. And like I said, I hope, I hope, I wish you the best, man, because I want you to get back in this because it's a good life, man. You know that. No, man, yeah, I know life, that, man. definitely, it's a good man. Life. Just to, like I said, I seen, you know, Chris Cooley in the mall yesterday, man. It was just kind of different, you know, not to see people run up to him. Exactly. You know, and just, like, how times can change so mm -hmm. fast. I mean, that was just three weeks ago, you know, when he got released. And you now all of a sudden, like, you know, he's a ghost to this town or something like yeah. that. You know, I got a lot of respect for Cooley. He did a lot of great he things. He did a lot of great things. A lot of great things. I still, I had him sign one of my jerseys. I'm still framing and hanging yeah. up in my basement just because he's a legend in this town. I hope, you know, he has the opportunity to come back or retire as a Redskin. So, I know that was one of the biggest things that, you know, kind of, you know, was, uh, flustered him when he got released. He said, you know, I wanted to retire here. I wanted, to, you know, this to be home. You know, I yeah. bought a house here. I have a store here. A store here. I don't want to go play for another organization. And I think that's what, you know, is important about Redskin, you know, Redskin players. Most of the time, guys come back, whether they go somewhere and come back. You know, yeah. look at Phillip. He went to Chicago and then came back to the Redskins and, you know, retired the Redskins, you know. So, you know, like I said, man, it, it, you got a lot coming for you, man. Year one, you think you've seen a lot, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> you think no you can idea, play forever, man. man. No That's idea. one of the big misconceptions about this thing, man. Uh, yeah, but we're going to wrap this up, man. We're going to say thank you for everybody coming out tonight. Uh, you know, live from the Green Turtle here in Dallas. Uh, you know, like you said, Lake said, you know, I think it's what, Arlington on Mondays. We're not only on Tuesdays back here. You know, Dallas, you know, bring some friends, bring some family. <laughs> you know, come out and eat. You know, show the Green Turtle love. And, uh, you know, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you, Richard Crawford. Robert Henson, wish you the best of luck, Crawford. Best of luck this Sunday. Myself, the best of luck. Blake, have a great rest of the week and your family, and uh, we'll see y'all next sir. week. Appreciate <laughs> you. Ooh, man. Sports Journey. Sports Journey Network. Hi, I'm Shannon Doherty. I've played the girl next door and the girl not so next door. I've produced, I've directed, but now I'm doing something I've always wanted to do for me. I'm on my way to getting my college degree. I logged on to Education Connection, the free service that showed me hundreds of schools and degrees so I could pick the right one. Now I'm actually getting my degree in liberal arts online. But you could get yours in business, in culinary arts, in nursing, in criminal justice, 
even a degree in technology. From my schedule, Education Connection showed me online has the most flexibility. I can study on the set, while traveling, anywhere, anytime. So do something smart for your future. Let Education Connection help you find the right program for free. Log on now and get Education Connection's free success kit, stuffed with information about online degrees, schools, and scholarship advice. Log on now to 41educationmatching.com. Are you stressed over credit cards and other debts? Maybe through no fault of your own? Imagine how it would feel to have that weight lifted right off your shoulders. Well, here's some good news from America's trusted name in debt relief. Care One providers have already helped over four and a half million people in debt, and we can help you today. Just call this toll-free number to speak with a friendly representative, and in just minutes, you'll get your free debt relief analysis. Regardless of your situation, Care One has an option for you. We are there to help, and we do that in a way that's empathetic and supportive without judging their financial situation. The credit card companies, I feel, are trying to keep you in debt and trying to keep it so you owe them money forever. And Care One is a good way to get you out of that and get you out of it fast. A big burden was lifted off of my shoulders. Care One threw me a lifeline. Call Care One. They will help you. Get debt relief from a company you can trust. Just Care call the toll-free number today. Health Insurance Update. This just in for all uninsured Americans with or without pre-existing conditions. The recent health care bill will not take effect until at least 2014, leaving families and individuals lacking health insurance with no immediate solution to their concerns. Meanwhile, medical problems continue to be the number one cause of bankruptcies. Here's the good news. A health insurance hotline has been established to provide affordable health insurance for all uninsured Americans and, yes, uninsured Americans with pre-existing conditions. Call the number on your screen now, and in less than 10 minutes, you could receive a choice of affordable plans from the Hotline Network. This is not a discount card. You will have access to doctors, hospitals, dental care, infant care, and emergency services. Call the Health Insurance Hotline now and get you and your family covered today. Call 800-794-1817. That's 800-794-1817. Call now. Have you ever had an idea for an invention or new product? Bill Schaefer, one of the inventors of Whammo's new Splash Wash, did. He came up with the idea while watching his children play one hot summer afternoon. Bill invented a car wash for kids. Ride through it, run through it. And Ben helped submitted the Splash Wash to Whammo, the makers of childhood favorites like the Frisbee, Hula Hoop, and Slip and Slide. If you have an invention you would like to try to patent and submit to corporations and want free information that explains how InventHelp may be able to assist you, call now. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call InventHelp today for free information. Bill Schaefer made a financial gain on the splash wash. However, most inventions are not successful and Bill's experience is not typical of what inventors can expect. For your free inventors information, call 1-800-619-2363. That's 1-800-619-2363. Sports Journey. Sports Journey Network.